Welcome, 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 everybody. It is Saturday night special time. It's raining here in the Valley of the Sunstroke. So hopefully our internet is good. Um, we've got a pretty cool show for you. We've got an awesome interview, hopefully showing up soon, that I, that I think everybody's going to enjoy. So stick around. We've got new movie wars. Unlike Sticks Boy, who just decided not to stick around. Well, except for Sticks Boy. <laughs> just stick around. We got some, I think we got a pretty fun show set up. So let's cue the music and let's get this shit rolling. Warning the following video contains material that some viewers may find harmful or could be traumatizing to some audiences and doesn't reflect the opinion of Renovision. Viewer discretion advised. <laughs> Well, everybody, I didn't hit it big in Vegas because I'm here, so I didn't have money to get the drapes changed. <laughs> Whoops. I did, I did good the first couple nights in Vegas, but then the last night in Vegas decided they wanted their money back. Like, I've never done so well in Vegas as I did this weekend. Usually, I just, I, I might as well have just walked in and thrown $1,000 into the garbage can of the casino and walked back out. <laughs> it, would, it would have done the same thing, you know. But this time I was actually doing pretty well. But I saw Chris Angel and I saw David Copperfield. And completely different magic shows. Like, I like magic. I think it's cool. But the one thing I want to let everybody know is David Copperfield has the time stone. And he uses it in his act. Ooh. Because he reverse he he rewinds time in his act for us. So and he says it too. He's like, I got the time stone, bitches. <laughs> you don't give a fuck. Rewinds time. He did. He did. He rewind. You know what, Tyson? Thank you. It's good to be back. So, but yeah, it was it was Chris Angel was like seeing nine inch nails. Yeah. And, like, David Copperfield was like seeing like I don't know, like Simon and Garfunkel or something, you know? Nice. But they're both so, just letting you know that, you know, I don't know if he got the time stone from, from Loki when Loki was, you know, in the, you know, but where was that at? He was in the, the, the uh, where was that office he was at where they had the that TVA? Door yeah, that had that, that, I think. David Copperfield went there and took one of the time stones from that drawer. Uh, maybe David Copperfield is Thanos in disguise. But it was a pretty cool show, but yeah. I've never seen so many fucking little kids in Vegas in my fucking life. Were there a bunch of chicks at the Chris Angel show? Was Dude, he wearing football pants? No, no. He was wearing like tight spandex black glittery type of pants. Oh, he wasn't wearing uh, silver and black Raiders football pants. With his, yeah. with his, uh, his little his chest peeking out of a tight tank top shirt and some black I, eyeliner. I think at one point I don't even think he was wearing a shirt. <laughs> While he was so waiting to mind still, freak you, he's still mm -hmm. living in that. I mean, he's like it's like his style. It's like you're you're like rocking the Chris Angel. Dude, it was really cool as shit, anymore. though, man. Like, I know the shit's fake, you know, and, but I was like, <gasps> how the fuck do they do that shit? Like, he climbed up this tall ladder and, like, walked hey. out, like, vertically. And then, like, he does his levitating thing. Woo! And then fucking... Did he do it like that? Woo! Yeah, he was like, woo! What's up, bitches? I'm Chris Angel! And uh, they, like, he, like, lowered himself into, like, this, like, Look like hamster looking ball, and they shut the lid, and he's still like levitating inside of it. Like, okay, is it magnets? It can't be fucking wires because they closed them into like this other thing, you know what I mean? But like, I don't is he know. looking for cheese? What? Yeah, he's hamster. Yeah, and he was running like this for a long time. 
<laughs> eating cheese. And then I wheeled out a giant bottle and turned it up on its side for him to drink out of. <laughs> I don't know, man. No, it was real. It was crazy, though. Like, his opening act was like, you know how they swallow razor blades? And then they swallow floss and they, like, pull it out and it's all tied together? Dude, he swallowed the razor blades and then he puts, like, this camera down his throat. So you could see him, like, cutting up his throat and shit. Like he, what? what? <laughs> he was cutting open his throat on live camera. Well, There's like he had a bunch of razor like blades in his throat, you know that trick, and then they but was it bleeding? Yeah, he was like bleeding and shit. Like you could see it, like <laughs> sitting in his throat. Like it was crazy. God, I mean, you think he might like show no bleeding? That's called mutilation, not magic. <laughs> yeah, dude, it was pretty fucking cool though, man. And David Copperfield's pretty fucking. If you guys ever see David it's Copperfield, witnessing like, murder. It's pretty cool. I probably yeah, David would've... Copperfield. David Copperfield wasn't shoving razor blades down his throat. No, no. I would have been on the phone with that. That's what I said. Chris Turn Andrews was like going to see Nine Inch Nails and watching <laughs> David Copperfield was like watching Simon and Garfunkel or something, you know, like Copperfield. Two different types of spectrum. Nine Inch Nails concert and change. I would have been on the phone with the suicide prevention hotline and be like, oh, this man is uh <laughs> Yeah, they could peekable he ass and razor blades. Lost their phones in the thing, so nobody could call. Oh my god! Isn't that, isn't that what they did? Lost your phones up, or I tried, Ed. What I was gonna do is, if I hit it big in Vegas, I was gonna buy new curtains. <laughs> <laughs> but I, Ed, did you think that's crazy that they they make you lock your phones up? What if you needed to call nine one one for an emergency? There's enough people in there. Yeah, like David Copperfield made you lock your phone up. I think he does that. Well, first, you don't record because they're super so anal about out. that. Because it's like yeah. a copyrighted show and they probably don't want to give the, you know, have people be able to do it. But like, so what happens yeah. is, is you, he, you email him at the beginning of the show. And then he does all this stuff. And what's cool about David Copperfield is it's a very um, audience and get it, interactive thing. So he's always picking people out of the audience to do stuff. And like one of the things he did was like uh, he picked this girl out of the audience. I, I, I'm I like church. And so what happened was at the very beginning of the show, as people were coming in, he like he had this big piece of paper and he clipped it and it, and it rose to the like, you know, way up high on the stage. And he had this girl come up and she, he was asking her questions and stuff and then said, you know, who's your favorite, uh, like actor. And she wrote Brad Pitt and then they lowered the thing and turned it around and it was Brad Pitt. And on top of that, Brad Pitt's, how face, did he smell? He smelled like he doesn't wear deodorant. And, uh, <laughs> Brad Pitt everything was that she had said about her life, like where she was from her boyfriend being engaged was all written to make out, Brad Pitt's face on the poster. Uh oh, he wasn't there. Brad Pitt? No. <laughs> oh, I think I, I lost I, something. I lost the translation. I just heard Brad Pitt. Was yeah. There. So what happened is he threw these things down. Yeah. And the smoke came up, and Brad Pitt was there. No, he said he's there, and he, but he's and he was taking a leak at the time too. So you saw his big old wang sticking out and shit. It was crazy. I don't know what's. You're getting is. Hartman all worked up now. Stop. <laughs> but. It was cool. It was fun. It was a nice weekend. I so those shows have got to be pretty, even though it's you know razor blades and stuff like that. It's probably fun to be go to those. It was fun to see. It was. I'll say the seats at David Copperfield are a lot better than the seats at Chris Angel. Like I, I don't think like a toddler could fit in the seats at Chris Angel. Like I had to like, and I'm fat. Don't, don't get me wrong. And I had to like, well, I mean, wedge into my seat, and like, I prayed the whole time that nobody came, so that to those kids' seats that I had to I, stand up. But people were coming all around you. Oh, was, <laughs> ah, mind freaked. Did Did Chris Angel bring his own folding chairs? I mean, what, what venue was it? Yeah, I guess he's at Planet Hollywood, so it's at the. Planet Hollywood, uh, Dome or whatever the R R Riva Dome, yeah, whatever thing. their auditorium is in there. Because the Lexor yeah. oh, was like, Oh, okay. we're tired of you being here, you can go somewhere else now, right? We want to got, got a hell of an ego. I think it's all he's like Chris. the Scott Stab of magic. He reminds me of Scott Stab from Creed. 
Yeah. <laughs> hey man, dude, that, dude, three, that yeah. dude's like got so many awards for magic. And the only thing that pissed me off okay. about it was it's actually a kind thing that he does. Gives but he asks that everybody sucks. to donate to kids' cancer research at the end. Mm. <laughs> and I'm like, motherfucker, don't you have enough money? Yeah, motherfucker. Oh. Don't ask me for my spare change. Don't look at me. Like you got the. We just paid you, man. Can't you make? <laughs> can't you make money yeah, here? Like, isn't money? that what magic Jesus. is about? Well, one of David Copperfield's things is he did uh, lottery bills. numbers, and I'm gonna start using those with my lottery numbers. <laughs> it's magic. He gave you lottery numbers, huh? Step in if you take <laughs> lottery ticket yeah. numbers like that. BK says I return, and Kyle's still here. Renovision HR is merciful. <laughs> Like, Apparently, uh, Marco doesn't want to be in, in the show. Like, Marco just wants HR from behind the scenes. He's just yeah. he's just monitoring what we're doing. Uh, it's all right. That's good, man. I'm glad that Vegas was a good time in uh, the season of giving, and and they were like, "We're gonna take it all away." We went to a. Mm, give it to I cancer took my kids. son and my daughter to a concert on Wednesday. There's a band called Dying Wish and a band called uh, See You Space Cowboy, which is a pretty cool fucking name of a band. Did they, they play just play Dennis nothing Cowboy but song? covers of, yeah, of uh, Cowboy Bebop songs? No, they're like a screamo band, but like the band Dying Wish has this, uh, she's got a, they got a chick lead singer, which there's nothing wrong with that. I swear to God, they have a song where she goes, meow, 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 meow. <laughs> just throw no, me out of that because no, it's yeah, all it's all wow. better like i was like did she just say meow for like three minutes and then the guy gets on and starts rough 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 <laughs> great great song maybe i spoke too soon about hr <laughs> um. <laughs> well i guess as we're waiting for our guests we could probably get into a couple news stories Oh no, Dad is here. <laughs> what gotta... happened this week? What happened this week, Sticks? What do you you got a story said, to share? I said there was plenty. To, there was plenty to talk about with trailers and stuff going on. So yeah, let's get let's, into that. All right, let's get into some news here. A whole shakeup at Disney going on with the change in the CEO. Marvel Con- Marvel Studios could be looking to focus on quality over quantity for Marvel oh, Cinematic Universe for you. in Phase 5 and 6. I appreciate that. I thought I did it. <laughs> According to Marvel Studios sources cited by Comic Circus, the studio is re-examining its upcoming slate after internal negative feedback over the handling of Phases 4's distribution and quality. The issue addresses behind the scenes, including creative difficulties with scripts, post-production problems, and lackluster visual effects. To prevent Phase 5 and 6 from continuing down a similar path, Disney could ensure or ensure a creative oversight on MCU projects still in the pre-production stages, which in effect could see future projects delayed or outright canceled. So this, this is how I imagine that meeting happened. They're sitting there, Feige and everybody's standing there, and they're like, damn it! They noticed the shitty effects in the fucking CGI. Feige, you told them they were so dumb they wouldn't fucking notice. <laughs> I guess they're paying attention more than I thought. Now we're gonna have to redo everything. No, no, no. They won't notice in, in phase five. If they notice in phase four, phase four, Feige, they're gonna notice in phase five. And I think that's what happened. And then the two of the guys go, you know what we gotta do, right? And guess what? We gotta kill Feige. <laughs> I think Eisner came wow. back and was like, "What is this shit?" and threw his threw his water down on the table and it splashed everywhere and he was like, "This MCU stuff is horse shit." And got all like, he's fucking angry knocking and, off fucking yeah. charts and shit off the He's like, and just clears the table and yeah, throwing things every ripping stuff off the wall, ripping comics in half, eating them, going, "This is not the Marvel projects we put out. Get your shit together, Feige." <laughs> and so now they're going to re-examine everything. And he looks at us and says, this is how you do the wall breaking. 
and then he pulls a She-Hulk and, and then, you know, gets rid of that. I blame it on She-Hulk. But one good thing on you could one good thing you could say <laughs> is at least they noticed and now they're gonna make sure to do something about it. Well they had to I I think they can't they, not uh, reference like people being pissed and some some shit that was like uh what they call it the MCU. I heard something about that. Well I don't think it has anything to do with that. It has to do with the lackluster no. special effects like you look at movies, oh, end game and pre end game, end game, and then pre end game, and all the special effects were really good. CGI was really good, and then after that, it just kind of went downhill, and it's been I don't think that going downhill. Is, and or, oops, sorry, screwed it up though. Well, you could see I that they kind of cut corners on CGI. Well, they and they've been embattled with allegations coming out that they're overworking visual effects crews, and they to the point where and underpaying them and now that they tried to start their own vfx company in house and there's a lot of a lot of uh Ooh, that's like man i wouldn't want to work there <laughs> claims being made about it's, the way they're you know handling that sounds things, like so. almost every company i would not want to work in america <laughs> disney's FX. overworked <laughs> underpaid but those guys that work the shit out those other guys no we're a different company <laughs> Next thing you're definitely saying the overworked and underpaid. Chained to a computer. I, I, was, I wanted to say something sarcastic yeah. to Mickey Mouse. What do you think it's gonna be? <laughs> of course I'm gonna overwork and underpay. Oh, oh. What is oh. this shit? Oh. Oh. <laughs> you think we're gonna pay it, you? Oh. It, it sit back at the computer and get that right. Oh. Oh. I ain't paying you. <laughs> I ain't paying you to sit here and look pretty. Oh. I need my money to fuck whores, <laughs> Like, what, what does he do in, in South Park? <laughs> yeah. what, what is he's working his little... Him and, him and oh. Randy are the reason that the coronavirus started. <laughs> it's Mickey Mouse's fault. Oh, man. But I, I'm glad they noticed. They You could tell that they pay attention. I don't know if they truly pay attention to, like shows like this or not but like i think they, they might do. Pay attention to stuff like this because <laughs> show after are. show and, and i got the article showing that that we are noticing that the cgi is a little bit lackluster yeah i'm pretty sure when the trans when the transcripts come out from that meeting they're going to actually quote absolute geek podcast and everything we've said about that i hope so cgi and so we need to calm that fucking it, pile down. <laughs> I think that the word it, spread, like, I mean, it's shit gets to Facebook and shit gets to YouTube, and then you know everybody starts. Oh, yeah. people are listening to that shit. Yeah, the 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 the, the, the internet mill runs rampant, right? I mean, it, it spirals just like the <laughs> CGI is done. It spirals right out of control. The word, uh, not good anymore. Just like the internet, it's not good anymore. Just like the too internet. Many, too, too many people getting mad for stupid reasons and trolling and it's I'm not crazy. Just mad at stupid reasons. What are you what are you talking about? What are you talking about, man? Like I I love posts on Facebook. I love it. You people just love like start shit. Like I, I posted a card, somebody said it looks like a murder weapon. And I'm, I'm like, yeah, it looks like you killed somebody. Like Jesus, I'm not gonna tell anybody on the internet what I, like what my plans are. And gee, I can make me kill myself. Rude people. I think he's lying. I think there's a blog out there that Hartman has written somewhere that you can find that, that outlays his entire plans. No, I made a George Hartman's one. death cards. Like <laughs> Hart, Hartman's manifesto. <laughs> it's Hartman's camera is what I see after 12 hours on mushrooms. <laughs> My camera is what you'll see after drinking a bottle of rubbing alcohol. <laughs> oh, According man. to the details. Yeah. What's HR doing? Hartman's camera looks like what chicks see after they've been roofied at the bar. Oof. It looks like HR is reading a book. <laughs> what? <laughs> he's, oh, he's, yeah. writing, he's writing up your performance review. <laughs> what was that? Put me in for a raise, boss. Uh, did you know Marco Briggs, like a camera, like in his 
We do. We have a we have a hidden Marco, camera in Marco's office. Website? He doesn't know. I hey, need you guys need help. Bro. <laughs> Marco's fan only fans. You guys need help running a show? You don't know how to run a show? You can't create your own content? Uh oh, boys. What is going on with this? Are you, are you here like this all the time? I literally just got back from a con real quickly. Uh, I'm like, is this dude here all the time? Like no. this? Like, and we don't see his little. Kyle square. said there was nobody on this show and then he needed somebody to do it with. So I. There didn't wasn't. Even it was the truck. I jumped out, onto like, the show right away. I was like, hey, we might be a little short staffed. It's not yeah. Really so I was like, okay, well, cool. You got four people in here. I can finish working real quickly. And then as soon so as I sent that text, Hartman and Sticks jumps in. You can split it. Cool. Okay, I just got to, no, it's all right. I just want to finish something real quick. I'll come back. Give me a sec. Give me a sec. Go ahead. Gotta, they got to finish. Make, the make, make sure to spell my name right on that check. His last chapter. That, uh, <laughs> I think you're getting another check. <laughs> 50 Shades of Grey. <laughs> I got to see if he unchains her. Yeah, and then he realizes he's reading Spun. And the guy he's reading the contract this. from the Walt Disney Company to uh, have have them put their logo on Kyle's blinds. <laughs> Kyle, they're gonna they're trying to rent out the space on Kyle's curtains. Dude, it's, product it's, placement. It's there, dude. It's I will put up advertisement for money on my curtains. <laughs> HR Marco <laughs> writing up Burper Man. <laughs> Did you see how much? Uh, oh shit! I'm like. Damn. No, I didn't uh, see how much you shit. That's a little awkward. Damn, no, you yeah. couldn't. You it wouldn't fit. We don't have a hidden um, camera there. We don't, yeah, we don't have a hidden camera in your house. I uh, Steve Jobs uh, is dead. Birkenstock sold for like two hundred million dollars or something like that. Something his, ridiculous. His pair of Birkenstocks. His pair of Birkenstocks. Like, those better be Gucci. Um, they probably smell yeah. like rain cones. Probably smell like success. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> Employer view Kyle recommends three months sensitivity training. <laughs> All right. Two hundred twenty thousand dollars. I'm sorry. It wouldn't be Arizona boys if we didn't talk about the king of Arizona, the god to everyone in Arizona, the Todd Father himself, ahead of the release of. <laughs> Batman Spawn, the latest crossover between DC and Image Comics uh, to star brooding vigilantes. Tom McFarlane is sharing a career uh, callback to the white sketch of the Dark Knight from four decades ago. My first ever print art from 1981, McFarlane tweeted, 41 years later and I'm still working with Batman. The drawing which a number of Twitter users compared to the uh, comic artwork of Marshall Rogers was originally published in the le uh, letters pages of the comics journal. I was going to let Kyle, I'm going to pause for Kyle to tell his story about the time he told Todd McFarlane and Greg Capullo the funniest joke ever. <laughs> so we were at con and I told this joke that was so funny. I can't even repeat the joke because HR <laughs> Marco is here. But they thought it was so funny that I was walking away. They were still laughing about it, as you can see in the back of that picture. It's a very offensive yeah. joke. This is not the greatest joke in the world. It is just a tribute. I, can I tell can't remember that. the greatest joke in the world. <laughs> I, I, okay, I'll tell the joke. Are you ready? How does a gay guy fake an orgasm? He spits on the other guy. <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how much of that joke you heard, but <laughs> uh, uh, you sign okay, your lunchbox. I, <laughs> yeah. I remember the dude behind me in that picture. I think it was I think Brian was there too. He was talking and he was talking to a guy, and the guy had like a Spider-Man 300. And as he was talking, he rolled his Spider-Man 300 up and he kept going like this with it. Hey, how do you know? Because I was standing there. Oh, about the how does a guy a guy speak his orgasm? No. Anyways, did you hear the whole joke? Yeah, okay. making a joke on that joke. joke. Original Todd McFarlane first art, first published art. There you go. Is in the letter pages of the comics journal. <laughs> so don't listen to any of these other sites that lie to you and be like, no, this is. 
This is first Todd McFarlane art. It's not. Todd himself has confirmed what his first published art is. I've been moved up to 12 months of sensitivity training. <laughs> What's going on there? Is that him with Robin? No, that's him like... That's a whole lot of cape. Yeah. Well, it is McFarlane. I mean, the he's known for a whole yeah. lot of cape. Where are our guests supposed to arrive? I'm thinking... Like, I was wondering that like question you... myself, because I'm like, is he in L.A.? Because then he's an hour behind us. Oh, that's that means he's probably not going to show up until 6. Oh, that's right. Good point. The tripping hazard. I was like, hmm. Where is this guest to save this yeah. show? Well, we'll but... just keep going until he shows up. Those are the jinx. I got the I got the, the notification that you were going live, and I forgot an hour difference now with you guys because you guys don't have daylight saving time. That's because we're awesome. Yeah. Well, and we like to save the daylight, so we're better. Yeah, we're we're, we're energy savers. conscious over here in New York. Mm-hmm. They're like you farmers can't grow anything in the desert of Arizona anyway, so you don't need daylight savings <laughs> time. Cactus farms and coyote yeah. ranches. Wind farms. We don't have fucking wind farms here. We do. They don't have wind. They have wind farms. That's right. We we sell bottle fart jars. And we need wind producers. Um, I was Hartman wearing the Zodiac hood behind that Vaseline covered lens. (laughs) Vaseline covered? It's cracked. (laughs) Cracked, Vaseline, whatever whatever you want to call it. He's the son of the son of Sam. (laughs) Relax. Hartman just wants to watch some movies. I'm talking about Dahmer Dahmer season two. What is that noise? Hartman's uh, scratching off scratchers in the background, hoping that he can win enough money to to get his camera fixed. That is the new name of my cover band. Thank you, Repair. (laughs) A whole lot of capes, yes. (laughs) A whole lot of capes. Uh, the private collection of Spider-Man co-creator Steve Ditko is being auctioned off. PBA That's Comics, the division of PBA Galleries, has announced that the Spidey sale auction being held on December 8th featuring Ditko's personal comics that have never been publicly sold before. The collection includes some high-value issues of Spider-Man fans and collectors such as the character's first comic appearance and the debut issue of his whole solo title, The Amazing Spider-Man. Each book auctioned off comes with a certificate of authenticity signed by Ditko's brother, Patrick Ditko has been certified by the certified grading or gradient company CGC as from the collector collection of Steve Ditko. That would be dope to have a book, a grade a book that s- says on the label from the personal collection of Steve Ditko. He's fucking the, over his grave right now. When did the professional bowling association start selling comics? <laughs> December <PBA>. 7th. <laughs> yeah. PBA. December uh December 8th. Yeah. Don't worry, they'll give you a legit sig there, guys. All right. Yep. Okay, sounds good. What is PBA comics? Paps Blue. Pretty baller. Anomalies. I think it's just a grading service. Po- uh Pro Bull Riding Association. <laughs> Pro yeah, Bull Riders the Association. Pro Bull Association, the Bowling Association. Because um, if I remember right, the, the, the books are raw. Graded. Uh, it says that it's going to be they're going to be certified CGC. from CGC certified. as yeah. being from the personal oh, collection. PBA but, is an auctioneer and appraiser's yeah. place. Yeah, dude, who the his brother is selling them off? That's fucked, man. Maybe he hit hard times, dude. Those are still like. He just want I me. Mean, oh, he's like, selling all of them. Like he's, it's got everything's got to go. I, he wants to be like Marco, man, and fucking just throwing money up. That, that's the like camera. a. That's like a. He screwed me over big time. I'm <laughs> selling it all. I love how how engrossed uh, Marco is in the show. Dude, I'm telling you, like I literally walked in the door. I am. This is interesting. I made my joke. Uh, yeah. <laughs> he dropped his mic and he's out. That's it. So through, through some money at the camera. Good stuff. It says it's featuring Spider-Man artist and co-creator Steve Ditko's personal collection of Spider-Man comics comprising Amazing Fantasy 15, Amazing Spider-Man 1 through 38, and Amazing Spider-Man Annuals 1 and 2. Each book is CGC certified from the collection of Steve Ditko. And hey, how comes, much you want to bet? 
hold on real quickly. How much you want to bet this is the bullshit that that Steve gave to Patrick, like all the fucked up copies, and Patrick's keeping Steve just goes that are all like nine eights and shit, and he's just trying to sell his shit off and hawk it as his brothers. <laughs> right. I dollars, so that's true. Up, my fucked up uh, finger <laughs> fucked comics. Yeah, yeah. He's like, these are the ones. They're the fucked up ones that my brother like. They're all the defects my brother just sent me and shit. But I'm gonna say they're his, and I'm gonna keep all his fucking. He wants nice you to roll up and put in his yeah. back pocket and shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, for sure. These are, like, these are the ones we use in the bathroom. <laughs> so it says the collection comes with an illustrated certificate of authenticity from the Ditko estate, signed by the artist brother Patrick Ditko. The sale yeah, also includes exactly. of that? <laughs> copies of Amazing Spider-Man one hundred. hundred. Because you from... know how us collectors love I'll give you a certificates of authenticity, especially from especially from Patrick Ditko. <laughs> That's the. <laughs> No, uh, what's his name? The guy, the guy, who, did, uh, the guy who did, the guy who wrote, <laughs> yeah, the guy who wrote Get Shorty and uh, what's his name? Uh, he did a bunch of stuff. He lived out here. He lived in the same place for nine months. When he died, his family kind of they just they said there was a uh, authenticity with anything you bought there. They pretty much just went out and got stickers that had his name on it and said estate after it. At like silver stickers, and they plant it like everywhere. You didn't even get to like, hey, please don't put the sticker on there. They just started every time you bought something, they'd slab it on it. So if it was one of his books, you know that he wrote, slabbed, you know, slabbed it on it. If it was a piece of furniture's yeah. house, slab the shit on it, and that's it. It's like, well, fuck. All you need to do is go print out the same exact stickers. You could slab that shit on anything. Why does this? So what I'm hearing is Christmas to my favorite brother, know, right? <laughs> But I'm hearing there's somewhere the sticker on it. got a big Steve Ditko order. A big Steve Ditko. That's a big Steve Ditko. Yeah. No, yeah, I don't know. I mean, that's, that's what I heard. Like him, though, it's cool. I guess if you trust. Why did he brother. stop collecting after 38 though? What? Uh, maybe he wasn't an artist that that he anymore. Some of the run, or no, his brother stopped. Yeah. yeah, that's when they got in a fight and he stopped giving his brother comics. <laughs> yep. You're done. Like, All right. I'm you off the comics. You're cut so off. off. See these? They're going. Punk bitch. Dude. Uh, I think it's because, isn't that? Um, I, yeah, so Amazing, Sp Spider Amazing Spider Man 39 yeah. is when. Uh, 38 is it for Ditko. Yeah, yeah I know. But Ramita, I, I, no, but it's kind of but, funny to say. Yeah, it's kind of funny yeah. to say that his brother. That's the last one he said. <laughs> you're cut off, motherfucker. Yeah, you're done. No more but, toilet paper for you, buddy. Apparently, the sales are also going to include copies of Amazing Spider Man 1 through 300 plus from other co signers, vintage Spider Man toys and collectibles, <laughs> original Spider Man art. <laughs> And a rare photo of Steve Ditko. Does it say where the money's going, dude? If it's that to same wife bank account, dude, it's his estate. Yeah, to his to the to the brother. Yeah, so this is what no really happened. Cancer for kids or anything in that. So Ditko died, and his brother filled up a garage with a bunch of fuck comic book shit. And Patrick's yeah. wife was like, "You're not keeping this shit in our house." Yeah, you gotta pay for that storage <laughs> unit we're using out there. I want to park my car in the garage. I don't have any storage unit money. You better sell them damn books. <laughs> you guys I have problems. We're probably going to see a new high sale for for Amazing Fantasy 15, though, too. Just because oh, for of, sure. You can't get the book. This says Steve I don't Ditto know, dude. You know, that book. stuff's been down. It's It has been down a lot lately. Like almost 42%. Actually, it was really funny because we were talking about that book today because there's that one... If anybody follows that book, if you own it or you just follow it, there's that one offset one sale where it was 115 and it's like it didn't make sense because all the rest of them in the same grade were going for like, I don't know, 60 or something like that. And it was like the old price. I guess Comic Leak said that, well, Steve, you know, your boy Steve Ponytail works over there now. So Steve said that it was a mess up that somebody had paid for it six months ago and then they, or four months ago, and then they ended up putting, posting the price, you know, as the book is tanking, which, is very suspect in my opinion. Suspect. So sus sus I don't think we're gonna see a high because of this. I mean that's just also, to say Merry Christmas to my favorite right? brother. <laughs> so you think they held on to the information of the sale? Mm -hmm. so yeah, because they had more to sell. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I mean he said that was an accident, but that's that's not an accident that happens. Oops, we yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh, the market's tanking on that book. Oh, we should just put the sale up like it just happened. Yeah. Oh, I mean, do you still think those are going to go for a premium price though? Because of yeah, premium were. above. Yeah, premium above, but not. 
But the, I mean, as the price is going down, will it cap or something? Yeah, probably. See, Patrick told me it's Steve's. <laughs> yeah, these books seem like kind of hill, I mean, hillbillyish from these stories we're making up and inventing in our head about what's being said at the brother's house. Like your rare sus- photo it, of Steve Ditko is just a picture of Patrick holding a picture of Steve. Dude, no. <laughs> dude, dude, it's probably know, the one no. in the photo right there. Yeah, it's probably this photo, but they copy. You know when you can do that one thing where you print and copy and it reverses it? He probably just reversed it the opposite way in the image. So it's the same image, but like the reverse image. It's an original, never seen before picture. Wait, that's the same shit. It's just fucking backwards. Photoshop <laughs> a copy of the book you just bought. On, Joe. Yeah. I have no clue who this man is, Ditko, the brother. And just like that, Hartman's not part of the show. Oh my god! <laughs> I didn't even hear what he said over the sound of him right, scratching off the scratch. Is my mic scratchy? Oh, I mean, how? Can you hear that? You hear that? Yeah, yeah. Wow. That's you scratching something. That's me. He's yeah, trying I'm to be a DJ. It. I'm putting a brush on my screen, my iPad screen. Like I'm brushing it. We can hear you scratching your psoriasis or whatever it is. How? Doing. I don't get how you can hear that. I'm on the headphone. You're not supposed to scratch psoriasis. the eczema. What, the hell? <sighs> so what does he say? If... Get a cream for that. But All right. Next slide. Who's going to, I mean, <laughs> you're going to put some bid. Marco's going to drop some money on some Steve. Dick no, books, aren't you, Marco? No, not in particular. Hey. These, these books are always in demand anyway. So yeah, sell, I mean, they but... always do well. Yeah, they're always going to be wanted. Like, Yeah, but I don't want like, Patrick like to put the sticker on it. Dude, Kyle gets mad when people won't sign it and sign lunchboxes a certain color. Hey, what do you think is going to happen? I mean, what do you think is going to happen when they put a fucking sticky note on the back of the book, dude? I'm not. not Throws sure. it right back at him. What if it's a stamp? Well, you know, remember they used to do that? McFarlane used to do that with the... Mm-hmm. Uh, when he did that one signing, he he stamped it in the back with that little spidey thing after he signed it, mm-hmm. like a library stamp. That's like early McFarlane yeah. signatures. Yeah, he, he stamped the little red Spider Man yep. logo. Oh, I remember that. I remember that. But we had a, a plethora of trailers drop yesterday. Yeah, we did. Um, Yes, like guard started off on the Guardians of the Galaxy Volume Three trailer. You guys watch the Guardian tra- Guardians trailer? No, yeah. but we're gonna watch it right now, right? This is yeah. a great trailer. Oh. It was, dude. Adam Warlock looks terrible. He does look yeah. terrible. Jesus I Christ, hard that, Yeah, he's he still looks like, like bro, you gotta from, do something. Uh, blow my ears out, man. What? He, he's he's blowing my he's whatever he's doing he's blowing my ears out. In Adam place. Warlock still looks like the dude. Don't from, do uh, Don't play it, man. I got I've got the the sound uh, off. All right. It's uh what's that where he gets his with his his balls bit by the spider? Oh, uh, we're the, the Millers. Millers. <laughs> that's that's what I still think of when I see that. Like I like that they have a new ship called the Bowie now. The ship is cool, yeah. But didn't that that showed up in the um Christmas the holiday special? special. Oh, yeah. Special, yeah. yeah. You get those new Guardians outfits. I like them. Look like well, the 2000 X Men. <laughs> no, no, that looks like the that looks like the invasion suits. Like when he was doing that storyline with the, you know, when the, right right after like the Annihilation Wave, right after that, like when they were doing that whole oh, Nova okay. in, in space and everything, like right before Black Bolt, Peter Quinn both went into the vortex. That's the exact okay. suit. Actually, he's on there. He's got the pull down mask and the two guns going out. That's the suit that he wears in that. Okay. When there's space, who doesn't like some swole Groot? What the hell is up with Groot though? Too like his his he's his head's so small compared to his body. He's hitting it's that very fertilizer, awkward. dude. He looks very <laughs> fertilizer. <awkward. laughs> he's like yeah, he's like Liver King, man. He's on that fertilizer. <laughs> Wait, why is, is he flashing? Like a miracle miracle did he go back there. <laughs> he's on that. Uh, <laughs> If if they test him when he fights, he's you know they're gonna ban him. Yeah, he's gonna test positive. <laughs> he's also- Annihilation, thank you, BK. Yeah, it uh, looks like. Oh, well, they're gonna you- have the backstory for yeah. They're just gonna still do the- Did they do the backstory for Rocket before? Or was that only in the comics? It was only, no, in, the only in the comics. It was only in the comics. So I wonder if they're gonna do the like. Yeah, there's a lot of speculation that Rocket's gonna bite the dust in this movie. 
in Guardians the only thing 3. They, mm-hmm. The only thing they've ever said was that he was... Uh, I don't know if he hands. dies. <clears throat> yeah, I mean, that would seem... Yeah. Gamora, Red so they have so they's from that planet, Sticks? Say again? And then, yeah, what looks like uh, Among Us. They'll kill Star-Lord. A real... Uh, Live version of Among Us. Star, that's interesting because Star Lord did look kind of bad in this movie. Or just whatever. He looked bad in the Christmas. Thing. That's the rumor. What? You think Star Lord's going to die? And then you get your first shot of the past Gamora. Well, well they are <coughs> carrying Star Lord. That's interesting. They are carrying Star Lord right here in this yeah. shot. Go, um, Nebula has them. Which just buff Groot. Like, did they just put Vin Diesel in the Groot suit? This is probably put. Probably He's put the, ripped, dude. It's awesome. Hulk son in the suit. <clears throat> They're saying? like, look, our CGI budget is non-existent anymore after She-Hulk. We need to make sure we use practical effects now. Like Some man thing's got to be practical, and we got to put uh, Vin Diesel in the Groot suit now. Proof he's been furting. <laughs> <laughs> That's the budget cuts from JPEG. You got Rocket drinking yeah. a Slurpee. What else is he going to do on that shit, man, but push-ups? Rock is done running. Well, if you saw the yeah, Christmas yeah. special, he does something stupid. Butthole in space. <laughs> <laughs> I was thinking it, but Hartman said it. Adam, That's terrible it. Adam Warlock. It's horrible. <laughs> I saw this. And I was like, God, wow. That's horrible. That's what happens after you get your balls bit by a spider. That's yeah. what happens when you hug <laughs> too much. Why, why did they even thing. put the stone in his forehead? Because wasn't it the soul stone that was in his forehead yeah. in the comics? And then now the soul stone's gone because Thanos, you know, snapped twi- it away. Oh. You know and what? Now, he doesn't, he looks like that. Oh, that species. Uh, it's, oh, this is just horrible. What's I mean, this thing? is bad. Hopefully they pull a Sonic the Hedgehog with this and, and do something with this dude's face. Because it's not good. <laughs> <laughs> you know what they should do with his face? Is a... Get someone else to do it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Agreed. 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 I mean, he, yeah, he just looks. I don't know. He just does not look. He looks like he's been self tanning or <laughs> got a spray on tan right before he came to set. Yeah, yeah. like like him and Trump hang, hung out. <laughs> yeah. Is that him? Hey, like he's beating up on her. Yeah. Yeah. Supposedly. Yep. Yeah. They should have went with. You don't know if it is or isn't because they push away. Yeah, because yeah, the kind of rocket. Joe, I agree. They should have. Then just see that's where, yeah, this is where I think because they would have killed Rocket because there's no Rocket there and it's instead of Rocket and him, and, uh, yeah, Groot, doing the shooting Star Lord and Peter, and Groot, yeah, yeah. Like look at the look at him. He like his whole waist came apart to grow more arms to hold guns. I mean, it's gonna have its cool scenes, right? We know that, right? Yeah. He's like, no, and he's like, all right, we'll kill some people. And he's like, no, and then he's like, we'll kill one guy that nobody cares about. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, well, it's kind of funny. Like I said, I mean, it's going to have its moments, but there's also going to be, obviously, I mean, that Adam Warlock thing is just fucking gross. Yeah, that's terrible. I, I was hoping for better. When mm-hmm. they had previewed him in the what Guardians of the Galaxy two at the end, he didn't look too bad. I'm stoked to see what they do with the High Evolutionary, though. I think that'll be. They're bringing High Evolution into it. Is that what you said? Yeah, the high, high evolutionary yeah. is the main villain of the. Yeah. the replace rocket with the little yep. lemur kid with the basketball. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> What's that? That's the. That's what he hits. The kid he hits in the face of the ball is supposed to be a lemur. That's what it is. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's All right. What do we got next? Um. The next trailer. I'm gonna skip around a minute here, just because of the way I pulled these up. Uh, the next trailer is probably the most controversial and talked about trailer that came out this week. We got our first full official trailer for the new Super Mario and wow. animated movie. Well, it was great. <laughs> I thought it was a cocaine bear movie to watch shit. So like that you can't go without screaming kids yeah. in the theater. See what if we're gonna see anybody get up if he doesn't say it's me, Mario? But I kind of, I kind of get the feeling Mario. that they're making Mario, Mario look like a wuss in this, just because like Donkey Kong just starts beating the piss out of him. That's how it's always been with Mario. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah. I liked, I like all the the incorporations of everything they have in there. Char, let's talk about Charlie Day as Luigi. 
Is that who played yeah. Louis? At least he didn't try to do a fake Italian. Yeah, accent. I think that. I think who that's. Fuck, it's Charlie Chris Day. Got to go. He's uh, from Always Sunny in Philadelphia. Is he the annoying, the annoying He's Mountain the, Dew the guy? Angry boss. Yes, he is. Yeah, He's yeah. also in Horrible Bosses. He's like the, the dude that sniffs all the coke in Horrible Bosses and starts <laughs> like freaking out in his car. Yeah. Okay. So I mean, is does he do a good uh, Italian plumber accent? He doesn't do it at all. He's yeah, he doesn't do an accent at all. He just talks on normal. Like, help, like, help me, I'm in trouble all the time, friend. Hey, we need. To- yeah, because of the Rainbow Road, and it's like <laughs> Rainbow Road was Rainbow Road's part of Mario. Yeah, it's uh, like, it's what, you know, yeah that's it's, that's it's, Mario Kart. This is the only part I feel that Chris Pratt did a good job on of the woohoo with these like spinning out on the Rainbow Road. Hey, what happens when Wario shows up? He'll be played Chris by Pratt Chris Pratt. Pratt. Mario. <laughs> <laughs> and then Dr. Mario shows up. You got to think that well, there'll be a scene what? where he somehow is like goes into the original it's Mario me. game, right? Where it's he's me, the little blo- the pixel blocks instead of where the where the movie goes all eight bit. <sighs> Yeah, he goes. That would be good. Do you think? I think movie. that was the point okay. of Kong beating him up, but because that's kind of like the Donkey original. Because Kong in the original one was. Oh, are you talking? Fred Armisen. Fred Armisen praised the Grandpa Kong, right? Or have what? we not looked at the voice actors that are in the movie, besides the main characters? No, um... we just we were talking about a trailer. That's all we were talking about. It was a trailer. It's what's the Mario movie called? Mario just Mario? Because they've it's got some Mario Brothers movie. Super throw, Mario right? movie. So yeah. um Seth Rogan is Donkey Kong. Stick okay. Stick who Keegan Michael Keegan. Yeah, Toe. he's right. Fred Armisen is uh Cranky Kong. It's like and Donkey Kong. Donkey Kong. So that's the one that was who's the what, first Marco? game, the Mario game. Oh Illumin Illumin house or whatever. Who owns that? Illuminator Studios, the people that just did this movie, and they've got a bunch of other um, shit like on deck. Illumination Studios. Illumination Studio. They, yeah, Sony? they made um, they make all the like the um, minions, despicable shit? me movies. Yeah. yeah, dude, they're killing it. They, oh, they're, everybody, DreamWorks. they're owned by NBC Universal. Mm. Oh, they're killing it right now, dude. It's just gonna cost them so much money to make the sequel, or anything. Chris Pratt's gonna be in here eventually, right? Is that mm. too much money? They could just well, the first the one, they'll just go to a director video stuff. <laughs> you don't get oh, no way. <laughs> no way. Yeah. On well, Patrol think... Live is showing up at Hartman's house right now. <laughs> what? What are you talking about? <laughs> Your camera's like flashing in and out. <laughs> okay. I've got it covered. Just stroke. It's crap. <laughs> what? what so... is... You got to put a warning for photocentric people. <laughs> You're talking shit about a $500, device, $500 device. It wasn't cheap. Just need to get the screen replaced. <laughs> you bought a camera for five hundred dollars. That you no, don't... it's an iPad. Oh, it's an iPad and it cracked. I was taking the case off of it and it ripped the sides of it We're... and shattered the whole thing. It's cool, Harvin. We're just razzing you, man. What? I'm lost. Okay. <laughs> Anyways, I think Mario's gonna. It's gonna. I think it's gonna hit. I think everybody's gonna love it. People obviously be, are gonna try to make it, hate, but... like, because people hate everything, but like. Fucking Chris, uh, yeah. Chris Pratt How, how's sucks. that bad? What? The voice. Chris Pratt it, sucks at the voices. It, dude, for real, man. Nobody gives kids, a shit. Kids don't care, though. It's Nobody gives a care. shit. Yeah. Nobody's going to give a shit. Zero shit's given. Like it's the 40 year old people that have played <laughs> Mario Brothers their entire life. Don't care. Leave me your comics. How many comics do you think I own? Hit the bell. <laughs> Hit the bell. BK yeah, got it. No idea. BK got it. <laughs> Jeez. Oh, no, I mean that's it's good to see that Mario's finally gonna put out like something that's really successful, which is good because is Peach gonna most put of out the stuff that came out for Mario is kind of shit. So it's good to see they're finally is doing Peach something. Peach gonna put out. Come on, Mario. <laughs> he wonders why his screen's trash. Saw a lot of fire in that hand, but nothing. Then the next trailer we got this week yesterday was uh, oh, Indiana Jones go. Five. You call him Dr. Jones. Oh, jeez. Indiana Jones in the Dial of Destiny. Indiana Jones and nobody wants this shit. Oh, dude, I'm gonna I'm going to the movies to see it. I love I, Indiana Jones. I like Indiana Jones, but fucking come from on. From some 
from the fact that it's World War like, II. No, sorry, I don't like Indiana Man. Jones. I like the first two Indiana Jones movies, and I'll watch. I'll watch number three. I'm in Indiana, and I'm not going to go see it. <laughs> they named the dog Indiana. I. I have a sneaking suspicion that this movie you're gonna it's gonna be filled with a lot of flashbacks. Like you're gonna see, like him reminiscing about a, an adventure we never saw, and I think they're gonna do is a lot of deep fakes to de-age him. Because no, oh, sure. Go ahead. I ask a question real quickly. Go ahead. Obviously, I don't follow celebrities or celebrity news. Is um, Sean Connery alive or dead at this point? He's, He's dead. Dead right now. Dead. He's been so dead not for a while. Shot. Okay, He's go ahead. Dead? I'm just thinking about flashbacks. Yeah, so. All right, go ahead. Keep going, Matt. I'm they sorry. might be able to deep fake him. Who knows? But they, okay, they, they could have cutting floor stuff from. They Rush sold his soul for a certain amount. Because right? how is he still fighting z- uh, Nazis? Nazi zombies. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. And when he's like seventy years old, eighty years old, it just doesn't yeah. doesn't compute. Yeah. No, and you it, get a well, lot of shots of of him as a younger man in this in this trailer 20, too. 20, so. 20. What also doesn't compute yeah. is that there's an Indiana Jones five out. That also doesn't exactly compute. And according so to oh. you know, take of the Grim Assault, but though. IMDB Shia LaBeouf is credited in this movie. So no, oh no. Look there, there he is, deep faked, oh. young Indy. <laughs> Damn. Hey, if they could do it to Luke Skywalker, Damn. they could do it to fucking Han Solo. Young Indy with all the Nazis. Look, he looks young there too. <laughs> it's a bad. I stopped it. So is this going to be just a whole movie of like? There you go. Look at right. look how young he looks there. Like CG deep fake shit. Yeah. Like I really think this is a movie of him just going through his archives of artifacts, and he's like, "Well, let me tell you this story." We're gonna need you to record another time. line. Bring back River Phoenix. <laughs> and then all of a sudden, a top gun's gonna come flying over him, and they're gonna call it a day. Doesn't this look like a documentary where uh, Old Man Ford's talking about when he used to play Indiana Jones? Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Back Dr. in Jones. my days. Let, let me tell you a story, Sonny. Oh, he's driving the Millennium, Millennium Falcon, Falcon right there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Daddy. yeah. That's <laughs> awesome. Chewie's over on the right. What the fuck? <laughs> what the fuck is this shit? Now I'm totally going. To the, oh, I thought I was going. Yeah, well, I don't know why I didn't nail that one. So it's a Top Gun. It's going to have, uh, yeah, Star Wars in it. Okay, fine. That's how they're going to bring back fucking Han Solo. And when I wasn't looking for artifacts, Sonny, I was in deep space. Yeah. <laughs> uh, That's what it's going to be. It's going to be a, a crossover venture between him and Han Solo. Dude, that would be so awesome. A, that's why I said it. Uh, with that one little uh, image there, uh, those he even looks the age there. Like he doesn't look seventy there, but he looks uh, sixty-eight. <laughs> <No>. Yes. <laughs> no, I don't think he moves that well. Age, so. No, he's old as fuck. The oh, he's got old five stunt double there's, there's no <laughs> way he's running across the road. <laughs> so, hope it doesn't crash a million falcon in it. <laughs> <laughs> Do a golf course. Yeah. Dude, I saw a plane accident into a tree, and I was like, "Oh fuck!" Harrison Ford did it again. It was like, no, some two other people got in an accident. Dude, he's fucking eighty. Yeah. Oh, did they live? Yeah. Yeah. No, I was, I was giving him. I guess I was just giving him ten years. My bad. I just, yeah, gave him I mean, fucking eighty. Yeah, big in the 80s. I, you know what though? Hey, listen, at least if they're at least they're not trying to do a whole movie with him being an old ass eighty year old crotcheting around like you know Sylvester Stallone. Six. Like, hey, 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 yeah, let's go on the adventure. <laughs> crotcheting one, around. One more time. And you're like Jesus Christ. Eighty <laughs> for You get subtitles on the screen. Wow. Oh. Hey, oh, we're gonna get off my lawn. <laughs> gonna assemble all the best action heroes, and we're gonna uh, really spend the They're talking no, too fast, too fast. It's way too fast. Great. Yeah. I'm gonna, you know, assemble all the action heroes. <laughs> what the fuck is that? Somehow he went from Sylvester Stallone to Tasmanian Devil back to Sylvester Stallone. <laughs> he like no, he gets a loop, but he talks. Have you ever heard him talk? Like do an interview? 
He gets it. Yeah, he gets it like a loop for a little bit. He's like, I did it, and then fishes off with like one word. It's seven words into a word. You're like, <laughs> and his head. You've only he said one word there. Longer. You grunted out six things. That's and he just so screams, "Yo, Adrian!" <laughs> periodically in between because he gets confused. I know. Yeah, Yo, Jerry! <laughs> And then the closed captioning has like two sentences. Well, you do that. <laughs> the closed captioning just says mumbles in English. <laughs> Incoherent rambling. <laughs> it's just a bunch of question marks, dot, dot, dot. Okay, and then the so last one. It's got showing up. It's in the next Are you going to show the trailer for Cocaine Beer, or am no. I just hoping for it? You can go watch it on YouTube. They have it I've already seen it. And you don't have to We're on it. YouTube. Yeah, that's such a big... And then we got Transformers the true story. Rise of the well, Beasts. Kind of. If you were growing up in the 90s and you were a Beast Wars fan, it tickles your fancy a little bit to, to see two Optimus... Or, well, an Optimus Prime and an Optimus Primal. And all the... Yeah. Hey, hey, hey. Beast Wars. Bye, bro. What's that? Nothing. I'm interested to see how this goes with the... I think it's going to be like alternate universe primes. So what's okay? Explain. I never saw the Beast War stuff. What's Beast War about? So, so it's, it's, Beast. Go, go ahead, ahead, Six. I'll let you. Well, Beast Wars is where the uh, Ark lands on a on, on the planet, but instead of it being like hundreds of years later, it's like they become the animals of the period, where there's dinosaurs and apes and cheetahs and things like that. Shit, that looks like a good prime and a good fucking bumblebee. Wait, yeah, so the Arc Lander where? Sorry, I was just. This is actually really good. What the fuck? Who did this movie? Michael Bay. No, it was not. I don't. No I way. don't believe it was no. Michael Bay. No, I don't believe he's it was a, Michael. Bay. No, he's a producer. It's the director is Stephen Capel Jr. Wow, dude. Oh, yeah, but it's produced by good. Michael Bay. But like, this is the this is the first time I believe the first time because I've seen them all, but it's been a long time that we actually see like. I know that there's times where they transform, right, like in the Shia oh, LaBeouf shit. movies. Isn't that what they... my daughter loves that? What's her name? RC. RC, yeah. Yep. He's cool. rolling around and... the beat up bus. That motherfucker ain't moving that fast. That's fucking straight up fake. That was a transformer. That's good, dude. That's good. This looks good, right? Yeah, I'm excited for it. Like, I love Beast. So Wars. this is two yeah. universes that are meeting together, sticks. Is this what we're getting here? That's what yes, I'm thinking because they I think there's gonna be a third one too. Because I there's I, there's some there was a part in the trailer, and I don't remember which part, but where I thought there was like a a different What's that um, right power there's, power transformer with a with a human, but they woke like up. There's yeah, Cheetor. There's Transfers Cheetah, Cheetor. Yeah, you want me Transfers, to back up? No, transform. He said woke oh. transformers. I said yeah, they wake up. That's what they do. <laughs> they wake up. <laughs> it does look pretty there's good. Optimus Prime will transform. Oh, that's, cool. that's kind of cool. Yeah. I mean, my kid loves the. There's a little RC. Awesome. What's yeah, the other one? Good. What's like the this other part? This shot right here is. There's a shot in the trailer. <laughs> I don't that know if he passed it, where he's actually like inside the car while it's transforming. Yeah, that's um. I think it was right there at the end, wasn't it? No, there's one where they're like driving on the road and it starts transforming with him in it, not when he's getting out of it like that. It's oh, it's right Who, here. Who's the BMW? Or Porsche? Who's the Porsche nine eleven. Porsche. Who's Porsche? Mirage. Yeah, who's the Porsche nine eleven? Who is no? Who is it? Look at like he's inside. Who, that, who is the transformer? I had a seventy two B dub two. Yes, who's the transformer? That Plus, is cool. Mirage. Matt. Mirage. Okay, cool. Mirage. Yeah. So at one point, at one like, point he makes different versions of himself. Okay. Yeah. Oh, there he is. Yeah. 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 Awesome. Yeah. yeah that makes sense. That's Mirage. All right, cool. All right, cool. That looks good. Shit, Show man. But and Hartman Hartman's all about cocaine bear. So, the reason why I like Beast Wars, my like my I like it too because I'm gonna be able to figure it out. Because my kids like like the Beast Lord line came out in Hasbro. It's kind of like you can pick them up now at Ollie's and shit like that. Uh yeah. like a rehash of them or whatever. And I know people were stoked for them for a while there, but like I'm like, what the fuck? They're all animals and shit. And I didn't understand. Yeah. Like they're like, which is this? I said it's Panther Transformer. I don't fucking know. You know, like what the fuck is that? But whatever. But now it's kind of cool. That's <laughs> that's pretty dope. It's it's funny that Ed says he's a seventy two bus and the top speed was forty eight miles per hour. 
I got my 70 Volkswagen like a month ago. I got it up to 60. Mm-hmm. And the fuel pump went out and shit broke down. <laughs> That's why you can't have nice things. Yeah. Far from home, too, man. I'm glad that roadside assistance, you know, it's it's got a nice set of mileage on it because I was like, fuck. You just so used it for your Mustang, too. That Sticks, what's the other son. what's the other female transformer? Uh so there's RC, there's there's um Arachnus, that's in Beast Wars, the spider. Okay. They're the they I think they're the cheetah one. I yeah, think there's one that's green. Cheetor. What's the green one? Yeah. Well, that's not it. No. A green one? Yeah, I think she's green. I don't know. How many, who was the one that was in the original cartoon? RC. Was it RC? Okay. All right. Yeah. Didn't Beast she was in the that movie. crappy animation at the time? Yeah, it wasn't it animated the, the... like that weird clay. No, it was, was like computer animation. Yeah, it was like that crappy animation. Well, it was not for the time. I mean, we're talking 92. Right? I, I know, 93? but it was crappy. Well, it now was off the line then, but it, it was crappy animation. You know how many shows I watched from when I was a kid? I go, man, why did I watch this? Had like no one ever Leo saw what? What did no one ever um, see? Reboot animation. If you ever watched the old show Reboot, Reboot. Oh yeah, that's the same kind of computer generated block computation and stuff. What did no one ever yeah. see? I think our guest is here. Oh, hold on. I think he's getting ready. Just let him sit in the back. Uh, I, see, I see. He's getting ready. He's Looks waving. Like he's I think he's ready right now. Oh, it's better than the reboot. I own the seventy-two. TK, what's going on? All right, go ahead. Intro, let let him in an intro. Go ahead, Kyle. Hold on. We got him. There. <laughs> there he is. <laughs> There's so Man, many people here. Ralph and Joe. Hello. Huh. <laughs> it's an interesting thought. Oh, that, that was from a, a a roast of Tom DeFalco and Ralph Macchio had called in and he sounded like Joe Pesci. So. <laughs> This shows the last <laughs> last time I was on this. How's it going? Good. How are you? E- edit Good, name. Are you? Good. Let's go with. Uh, I don't know. How about Scott? Yeah, that works. Okay. <laughs> okay. How's it going? Is that light bad back there? Or is that? Oh no, you're fine. No, you're good. Yeah, you're fine. Oh, oh that's better. Well, look at yeah. that. Yeah, you were ready to settle for good, but yeah, yeah. That's now better, here we sure. are. Yeah, I wasn't expecting so many people. I just thought it was like one person, but that's great. It was, yeah. Hey, was, hey, Marco, why are you hiding? Where? No, that's not. You're talking about. Uh, oh Kyle. no, no, Marco's like all in the back. Uh, <laughs> hey, Marco. Hey, how are you? Good. Good. Um, so, how are you guys doing? Is this yeah. live, by the way, or no? Yeah, it is live. Yeah, yeah we're live on YouTube. Oh no. No, it's good. Yeah, I know. No, yeah, 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 no, we're good. I gotta uh, go. That's how we I'm, go. Hot. I'm. I was far away because I just got back from a con. Uh, and oh yeah. Then they were like, "Hey, he's coming on." I was like, "That's cool." I liked. Uh, I still. I'm on my third run of collecting uh, Age of Apocalypse, the '90s series. Oh, okay. That's so Generation X is kind of like one of my. You know, obviously, I like that part of the run too. You scared me. I thought you were gonna say I like that one uh, issue that you did. Back in uh, no, eighty nine when you were breaking nine. No, yeah, you're talking about that one, the one Batman slash X Men crossover that you did in the. Uh, oh my god! I wish I did. I no, did I? No, no, you didn't do that. No, no. But I'll tell you though, when I, uh, <laughs> you know, I walked in the office one day and they're going, uh, oh, I can't believe this. This is ridiculous. And I'm like, what? And they said, they just said we had to do a, a Star Trek X Men crossover. So stupid. Oh, I'm like, no one touches that except for me. I was like, I was so, <laughs> I was so excited. You know, because technically it would be what was considered a, a, a custom comic, you know, that yeah. nobody, that, that's where you like cut your teeth. But right. when I heard about it, I was like, no, I got to, I got to write that. And so, so much fun. So, yeah. Did anybody read it? Anybody? Here? Absolutely. Yeah. I'm a Star Wars fan. So, no. Star Wars? <laughs> so, I mean, like, uh, all right. It, well, it's been a while, but I have read that one. Yeah, there's a fun scene where uh, Nurse Chapel walks in, and she's like, uh, McCoy is talking to Hank, and she's like, Dr. McCoy, and Hank and Bones are both like, what? 
So <laughs> little things like that. It was fun. And uh, uh, what's his name? Spock did a nerve pinch on uh, Wolverine, mm -hmm. but because of his healing factor, it only lasted like five seconds. So Spock was like, "That's I'm taking care of that." And then all of a sudden, Wolverine was up again. Spock was like. So it's fun. So it do they give fun. you like carte blanche? Write whatever you want. It's yours. Have fun with it. Just do your. Just yeah, do I don't think anybody. Want. I don't think anybody wanted to edit it. So I think I was. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I mean, it doesn't, it sounds like if you're a fan of both those, it sounds like you would get. Oh my like, god, it was so much fun. Yeah. And you know what's funny was uh, Mark Silvestri was the artist on it. Yeah, he's cool. But if you look, I think he did like six pages, mm -hmm. and then like. David fan like you know like what what Mark usually does where he like gets like ten other people to people finish it finish yeah yeah so so but he did like two or three pages and they were fun so oh that's cool we've had him actually on the channel too there I started um, sketching this you peons finish it yeah he was uh, well you know what's funny is you can always uh, yeah I mean God love him he's uh, uh, you know like. Like Jim, if you ask Jim for a bedroom of a teenager, he'll mm -hmm. show you the bedroom and all the books and the shelves and, yeah. you know, the games they're playing with. And with Mark, it's usually like a, a desk lamp, <laughs> you know. Desk lamp. And a, and a pillow to indicate <laughs> you're in a bedroom. And it's like, okay, we're in a bedroom. So, so if you go through, yeah. yeah, yeah. So if you go through, you can pick out the, uh, the special uh, parts. I'm very interested because you know when I uh, when we first started uh, New Fifty Two, right? I was uh, they asked me to go to this uh, hotel in uh, this is in what two thousand and eleven. They asked me to go into this hotel to meet with the, them, and they just had this like kind of assembly line of people, and I had a meeting, and then I left, and as I left. I think it was Matt Hawkins and uh, Mark were coming in. And that was that Batman project that he started. Oh, that's cool. In 2011. So, yeah. yeah. I don't know. Is it out yet or has it come out? <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I'm seriously asking, like, has it come out? I, I know they a few years ago they announced it. They announced it and they announced it. Didn't they do something? Weren't they doing it under the – didn't they try to push it under the um... – Pearl Jam or whatever it's called. No, he yeah. just because he, he this is where you make us look bad because he just did an interview about something and they asked him about it on this channel like six months ago when it was Pete Renovision's the name of the channel. It's uh, that guy and uh, what's his name? Oh, dude, he did the interview with um, you're the worst name dropper ever. I was at a con all day, it was a one day con. I set up at six in the morning, I got back. They well, were no, like, oh, dude, smart, there's nobody here, and we got Scott coming on. Could you jump on real quickly? You're you know, like, I had a dinner with the... Uh, you're right. I'm, I'm farting. You're that right. one guy oh, the one uh, time. He was in the show with the... <laughs> Nelms. It was Nelms and Pete. Pete and Nelms. Go back and watch that interview it was six months ago. We'll link it below. No, you're we'll you're Star Wars, but you're not a Star Trek fan, right? No, I never watched Star Trek. I've okay, I'm going to tell you... I'm going to tell you a little bit of trivia. Who who watches Star Trek? Anybody? Okay, I have. Okay, all these guys except for me. I'm the only one that doesn't watch. <laughs> I was at a panel, not a panel. I was at a convention about five years ago. I met this guy, big strapping guy, older. He was like mid 70s, mm -hmm. and he turned out he played the Norn character when when Kirk has to go down to the planet. It's like one Earthling, one Norn, and they have to fight. And it was like you know just this big rubber suited guy. Oh, yeah, and, the green lizard guy. Yeah, and he had oh, never so been green, to a big, tall green lizard, like Godzilla yeah. or what? Yeah, like no, no, not not no, that big, no. but human size. Okay. And he said that Tweaky, the guy who played Tweaky, was like, "You got to do these conventions because you can go and the, you can sign pictures oh. and blah blah." And he goes, "So I just started, and it's really fun. My wife and I, we get out, and you know, people come up and they want to take pictures because it's it's amazing." And I said, oh, "That's cool. So, what other stuff have you done?" He goes, "Well." He goes, I played it. I was on the episode of Star Trek. It was called Mirror, Mirror. And yeah. I was uh, zapped by, uh, I think it was Uhura, after this fight. And he goes, but people won't remember that. I go, it's Star Trek. <laughs> go out oh, and get yeah. the headshot of you getting zapped 
<laughs> by that guy, and then you can double your profits. He's like, oh, really? absolutely, absolutely. So, yeah. it, that yeah. you know, it is amazing. I mean, you're like a con vet now, but I've had this conversation before, especially with some of the newer artists and stuff too. And just how weird people they don't understand how cons work, right? It's like if you have something to sell, it mm -hmm. doesn't matter if you're if you're selling in the stores and you have something to sell. Believe me, people will not only come up to you and line up, but they will pay you to sign the stuff you are selling, yeah, no matter what it know. is. Yeah, and, and as you get older, as actors get older, it's it's a fun way to, you know, if they're not getting work, it's just fun to, you know. But I, I know a girl who, do you guys have any, any Buffy fans? Yeah. Buffy the Vampire Buffy. Okay, so yeah. a really, really good friend of mine uh, played the uh, trashy vampire who Riley was uh, letting him, letting her suck on his arm so that Riley could be like darker and dangerous and da da. <laughs> but she only had that one appearance on the show. And I keep trying to get her to go to the convention. She's like, they're not going to care. I go, oh, they are so going to care. They're like, you know, <laughs> she'll be lining up for you because you've never done a panel, you, you've never done a convention before. So they'll be even more eager. So, so I'm going to bring her to one someday. Awesome. And it's, that's cool. It's cool of, this game. Go ahead. There's a lot of cons where these ancillary characters are there with the big character, like let's say uh, Shatner's there. And so you'll have a lot of these smaller actors that were just like guest spots or uh -huh. single aliens in a show. They'll show up too and kind of piggyback off of that. Yeah. And then after waiting in line for three hours for Shatner, then you go, oh, I'm going to go get, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, Junkie or, Vampire, I remember that app. Okay, cool. Yeah, that's what he's yeah. saying. They're saying they're just chat yes. chat saying they remember that app. Oh, okay. Uh, Hi chat. Yeah. How's it going? <laughs> so when you no, were no. when you went to that hotel for New 52, were were they were they talking to you about writing Teen Titans? Uh yes. They were uh they were talking about Teen Titans and Superboy at the time. And then it was about maybe two months later they had said to me uh they said look we're trying to do uh red hood and the outlaws and we can't uh we've been on like the sixth pitch with this person would you just look at it because we're trying to like like we're we've run out of versions to do it and i said okay so i wrote the first eight maybe first 10 pages and i said to me it's it's butch cassie and sundance kid it's these two best friends huh. they're pretty good at what they do but they're also kind of fucked up they're kind of like on the wrong side of the law and then you have this miss sundance character who likes one but also loves the other not like in a romantic way but there's like a love there that they share and and so i just wrote up i said so this is the tone i think it should be fun and bouncy and you know like it like butch cassie and sundance kid. So I turned it in and I didn't think anything of it. And then the next morning they called me and go, all right, you're writing Red Hood and the Outlaws too. I'm like, okay. <laughs> and a lot of the other writers were uh, angry and just made it known. They were like, you know, yeah, you, you're, why, why are you writing three books? You know, or yeah. I heard that everybody was upset. And I said, well, you don't understand that, uh, especially with the new 52. And these editors were so, I don't want to say batshit crazy, but let's say batshit crazy. Um, yeah, how did so, it work out? Yeah, so every well, every issue that I did, I had to write three times. Oh, so I said, I said, you guys are excited because you think, you know, you should have three issues. But actually having three issues is like having nine issues. So I'm actually doing nine issues a month and getting paid for three issues. So it's really not as exciting right. as you think it is. So when you were writing Team Titans, you had one story and then they kept you had to keep you had to change it three times for every issue uh it was um, it wasn't so much that i would have to have i to mean change. yeah it would uh let me say this is that bobby chase was my editor on uh teen titans and she was very 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 good uh she was great she was actually my very first editor on uh, alpha flight when i had alpha flight years ago um, but what would happen is that they would, uh, well, like I'll give you an example. Like, I don't know if you remember Red Hood and the Outlaws, uh, issue mm -hmm. three, but at issue three, 
Dan, and I'm, I'm not telling stories out of school because Dan will tell you the same thing, but he, uh, he was, he called them and he said, you know, Scott doesn't get Red Hood and the Outlaws. There's like no emotion and it. it's just like quip, quip, quip. There's no emotion, emotion. So Bobby goes, hold on a second. She went downstairs and she comes back with the sequence where uh, Jason can't go out because he has the flu and Batman leaves and then he comes back and they watch TV together. And it's like, and he's like, oh, okay, for forget what I said, just go on. Um, so it was like, so there's always this kind of like, peering over the shoulder that was happening. And uh, I, um, what was it? I. Uh, so it was like, they'd come down, they'd ask you, hey, could you change this little part up of the book? Cause we want to see more emotion or whatever else. You'd give it back to them. And then they'd come back and go like, no, that's not. It's well, in, the, in this particular case, they, uh, that, I'll tell you, I'll, I'll tell you one thing is, is that Dan to this day will tell you that he made a bet with anybody that would make a bet with them that out of the new 52 red hood and the outlaws would be the first book canceled. He, he said, yeah. I don't get it. I don't know why anybody's going to read this book, you know, and then it wound up living through. <clears throat> yeah. A long time. Yeah. Through all the, you know, through the, what was it? The uh, it red hood rebirth. arsenal stage. Yeah. Rebirth. rebirth. And rebirth. so it just kept going. Um, and then, so over the years, he's like, eh, I don't like, I lost that bet. Um, <laughs> but for the most part, they, uh, yeah, it was just a constant. You know, like, I'll, I'll give you an example. I, um, it was the origin issues, and there is a uh, Tim Drake origin, and it gets drawn, and it's written, and it goes, and it's on the way to the printers. It's at the printers. On a, uh, they're going to print on Friday. On Wednesday night, uh, my friend uh, and longtime editor Bob Harris calls me up, and he goes. You know, I, I don't think the story works. The story should be uh, from uh, Batman's point of view. It's Batman's idea of like Robin's origin. And I go, well, okay, but that's uh, kind of hard because Batman's on like three panels in this <laughs> issue. Yeah. So I'm not sure how you would do that. And he goes, well, you can do it. You can do it. You know, so figure it out. Yeah, right. So Wednesday night, I stayed up and I wrote an entirely <laughs> different issue based on the art. Hmm. And they sent it to the letter, and the letter sent it, you know, essentially to the printers, and that was an issue. So it was like, so literally, like, imagine being handed twenty pages of art of a story you've already written, and now you're writing a whole other story over it. Very weird. So, yeah, because so it, was you, like you that, gave, you know, it wasn't like, even just a sketch. Because, like, usually, oh, well, maybe I guess maybe for some people it might be easier to explain what technically the editors do. They typically just go and make sure you didn't hide anything in the in the in the pages. <laughs> well, nowadays, you know what I mean. Yeah, they no. make sure you know they'll be like, okay, cool, this. No, maybe could you try this a little bit, a little tweak here, a little tweak there, and have the notes in the side area. You might go through two or three of those, but most of the pages stay right in your experience. I'm not an artist, but most of the pages, the pages I've seen, usually stay pretty similar with a little bit of note and changing like that, like different type of word bubble or maybe this X, Y, and Z. But what you're saying is they had you changing full portions of this, each story. Yeah, it was like, boom. It was, yeah. So, and, uh, you know, there's a scene, there's a thing with, uh, with death in the family where yeah, sure. it was supposed to end with uh, acid being thrown in Jason's face. And I had worked really hard to like get Jason away from being just a guy who, uh, just a vigilante. But I was like, listen, I, I don't think that should happen, but if it's gonna happen, then okay, I'll write to it happening so that when it does happen, he's at a place where he proceeds a, a pace. Uh, and meanwhile, I was working on a subplot where the Joker had Tim Drake captive and what he was doing was really screwing with his head so that after death in the family he would go back to the group and we would know he's fine but we'd start to get these hints about like how something is going on and then eventually we found out that oh when he was kidnapped Joker reprogrammed him and blah 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 and there is a scene, there's an issue, the issues, the 19 issues, uh, the 19th issue of the series, they had those gate fold out covers. Mm -hmm. And they said, uh, what do you want to do with your issue? And I said, well, I think it would be interesting if 
uh, Robin is holding Solstice and he's holding her up like she's, you know, she's passed out and he's conflicted. And then you open up and you find out that she's handing, he's handing her off to uh, the new Dr. Light character who's going to like siphon her powers and essentially she's going to be this slave to him. And you just realize it's because in the story, she'd been getting closer and closer and closer to finding out what was going on with Tim. And that's what I had been writing, like little hints, getting closer. She's nervous, da, da, da. And then the 19th issue was the reveal that, holy fuck, Tim is so screwed up now. And now there's no denying it. Now we know it's the case. Sort of like when we saw Tara in that issue when she was, uh, you know, sleeping with uh, Deathlock years ago. So that was going to be the big moment. Was that can I ask you a question? Because we've talked about this, especially some other people to like theorized on it. But like uh -huh. listening to you sounds like you've already whatever you're on and you've had long runs. So, it, you know, like it's really art. It looks like everything's arc formatted, like nine book formatted now, 10 book formatted now. But when you when a lot of your work was done, it looked like you had like you almost had a whole volume planned out. Right. Like to, to go. Is that how it, is that how it worked for you? Or were you really going? okay, cool, I have another arc coming up, so let's sketch out this arc, let's sketch out this arc, or were you far enough ahead down the thought process that you already had, like maybe, you know, 50 books done, you know, maybe, you know, about, I mean, so I know funny. that's weird, but like an No, no, it's, it's, a, it's a perfectly valid question. It's just that I uh, am almost always, uh, when Fabian and I were doing the X-Men books, he was always very angry at me because he had 25 to 50 issues ahead, and I would be like, oh my God, that was such a great cliffhanger. And now I'm going to see what happens next. And be like, you can't write that way. And I go, but if I can keep myself excited, then yeah. I think the readers will be excited. You know, like sure. I want to, like I want to write myself into form and see what happens. I mean, you know, see where these characters go with it. And blah, blah. So I'm actually the, uh, you know, like I'll, I'll give you an example, like uh, in um, with Bizarro in Red Hood and the Outlaws. I had, uh, I forget how it was that he wound up becoming smart. It became smart, smart, bizarre. And I had an editor and the editor goes, okay, you can do this, but only for three issues. And I said, okay, why three issues? He's like, well, because everybody's going to know that he's not going to stay smart, bizarre. So there's no point pretending. So you should get, take him out right away. Yeah. But who cares? That's the funny part about it. Yeah. Like <laughs> so I'm like, okay. So I was writing it and I was writing it. I got a new editor, Ben, uh, Oh my god! Oh, that is so. Anybody want to look that up and help him out real quickly? Yeah, yeah well, <laughs> it might not even be Ben. What am I? I'm blanking. I don't know. But anyway, he uh, he comes on, and I said, "Listen, I said I'm really having fun writing uh, Smart Bizarro, but and I'm not trying to be like, uh, oh, the editor, the first editor said I could do what I want." I said, I really, he said three issues, but I'm liking it so much. I said, I would like to explore it more. And he's like, okay. And to me, like the best editors are the ones that let you run into an alleyway and maybe you go on, on another street and you have a whole new set of stories, or maybe you hit a dead end and you go, okay, I'm going to end the story right here. Or maybe you come back and go, okay, well, that was a, a, a worthwhile i mean so so smart bizarre wound up lasting i think a whole year and yeah. people and then i introduced uh, uh the little uh what was it pup pup um the toy version of superman became like sure. his too many yeah. cricket and and it's like you know like i just you know as things happen i'm like oh that's kind of cool and let me go down that way but it's uh so i'm I, i'm kind of like the opposite of like people who you know, Scott Snyder, God bless him, you know, his yeah. first uh, words on uh, on uh, Court of the Owls. I'm sure he knew exactly right. what yeah, every Snyder issue knows, Snyder knows what's going to happen two years from now in his stuff. Yeah. And Aaron's then, another and, one. Like yeah. Aaron does a lot of the stuff, too, where it's like it's just he put stuff in three years ago in books and you see it pop up three years later and stuff like that. We were just like nowadays, I, maybe it's more because fans are more critical, I think, or whatever. But you always hear like this artist or this writer can't stop stick to landing or like they had to mm -hmm. 
And like some of them are like really good stuff. And you can see that they're going from arc to arc and just kind of how you described it. Well, maybe their editor is giving them a little bit more leeway because of how well they've done and everything like that. And then all of a sudden, I don't even know if they don't stick the landing, but sometimes it's just like that wasn't. Uh... Well, see, that was that that was my that was the most frustrating part. And I'll tell you, like going back to that uh, thing with Dr. Light and that 19th cover. Da, da, da. Yeah. So Scott decided on his own, which is totally his right to change the ending of Death in the Family in such a way that Jason would not get splashed with the acid. Yeah. Yeah. So Dan, in a fit of rage, was like, you know, if there's not going to be any long, long lasting effects, we're not going to do any. So anything that whatever you were doing, there should be no after effects from Death in the Family. So I'm oh like, well, God, come I on. I said, literally, I've been Thomas. spending the last six months like setting this whole like Tim Drake thing, blah, blah, blah. And then they go, um, they hand me the cover to uh, to the 19th issue and yeah. it's Trigon. And it's like, uh, you know, Trigon is the big villain. I'm like, why? Like, who cares about? <laughs> Tri you know, like, Trigon has only one. He's, he's like Galactus. The only thing Galactus does is he comes to eat Earth. Eat first, he's, yeah. he's never going to eat Earth. So, you know. Well, T uh, Titans Go made Trigon more important than he ever was in his entire life. So, which like, one you said? Not... Oh, tri tri Titans Go. Yeah, Trigon. No, yeah. Didn't see yeah, it. The cartoon. Like, that's it. It's just like, okay, whatever. So, well, so they, but that, uh, and then they said, well, make it so that Trigon's been trying to make, uh, Tim go crazy for the last six months. I'm like, why would Trigon <laughs> give a flying fuck about you know <laughs> a 16 year old Batman site? Like, I don't, I don't get it. So it's like, so things like that where that would get frustrating. Where it'd be like set up, set up, set up, and then you know they want to change it. Yeah. Most always Dan or somebody would like come and yank it out. So then when it happens and the reviews come out and they go. Uh, well, you know, uh, Scott looked like he was going somewhere, and then uh, had to fall back on Trigon. I'm like, oh, you can't. I'm like, yeah, he didn't. They would have said you didn't stick the land. Nowadays, it'd be like Scott didn't stick now the landing on that sense. one. Yeah, so, what's that? Now yeah, it makes no, more so, sense. Yeah, but yeah. It, I mean, there were so many times like that, and and the thing is, is like, I have to say, I'm being a little rude, but I don't think so. But like, I'm not. I'm not. I I would never. Uh, I'll say this. I'm not somebody that would like quit a book and then be like, oh, guess what? I quit the book because this editor sucks or whatever. Mm -hmm. Like, I just wouldn't do that. But here we are, you know, what, four or five years out, you know, Dan is yeah. gone. Everybody's gone. You know, Scott's doing his uh, teaching. That's great. You know, and again, I have no, no, no issues with Scott at all. But, but since we're here and we're talking and we're talking behind the scenes stuff, I figured, eh, I'll just, no, I think, I mean, that's not, I understand what you're saying too, because you're trying to, you're not trying to throw anybody under the bus or talk out of pocket or whatever. But it's just, you're just telling how it is behind but the scenes though. Yeah, but I, that's yeah. it. I feel like we're But I think it actually helps people baseball. because there's, yeah. you, there's a big negativity. You see it a lot of time. Like, I don't know how much you hear, but we hear it all the time. There's, especially with a lot of artists that are pretty good, people that are really nice, we've met and talked to before. And then all of a sudden, yeah, but that guy couldn't stick the landing in this or mm -hmm. this is the, and now it's like, well, you don't understand me. They probably had it, but there's an editor that was like, oh, or the publisher wanted to go in a different direction with it. And what are you going to do? Like, that's your pay. Your boss says change shit. You're going to get that paycheck. You're going to yeah. get the paycheck because you, you what, what else are you going to do? So, I mean, I don't see it like I don't see it as you ragging on somebody or anything. Yeah, like that. but it is. Uh, I will say there's fewer things more uh, embarrassing than when you agree with the review. <laughs> that is an insulting review but you're like yeah hey dude you're totally right that was you know <laughs> i just wonder if it's a matter of time where we start hearing it is only a matter of time because of social media but when we start hearing artists not like you where it's 10 years later you know artists going 15 hey. years later but artists going like i agree with your review it wasn't my fault not blaming on anybody just saying it wasn't my fault and then, you know, the Internet will eat that stuff up all day long. So, well, um, you know, it's funny when I first started because I had been, you know, in Hollywood between, you know, for most of the uh, uh, first half of uh, the century. Yeah. It sounds weird when I say it like that. But, uh, <laughs> right. but when I went back <laughs> and I had a meeting with um, Jeff Johns, 
and he goes, uh, let me give you advice. Don't read uh, the message boards. Don't ever read them. I'm like, <laughs> well, I mean, it's kind of like fan letters, right? Like where you get to see what no. people think. Yeah. <laughs> no. So, but it was, uh, you know, and I, I did, it took me a while to adjust because I was like, you know, people were insulting me and I'm like, you know, I was a stand up for six years. So my instinct was, well, if you're going to insult me, I will insult you back. Yeah, yeah. And it's going to be way more entertaining. <laughs> that one, uh, that one's on the internet. That's not how the internet yeah. works, bro. Yeah. So, <laughs> That's not uh, how it works. But now I, you know, now I'm not on anything. I'm not on, you know, I don't have a, I don't have anything. So, and it's, it works a lot. I mean, I think it's better. I got a know. question from the audience from our chat. What's that? It says, uh, we got one of our regulars, BK, says, did you like Dan Didio's direction for DC? I will be uh, make a joke and say uh, Dan Didio had so many directions for DC. <laughs> I mean, I, well, control. I think we saw the result, right? We yeah. saw the result of what happened, right? Uh -huh. Like yeah. the air they, the community. You know, you know, they, he's like talking like, well, it knew, he went from Indu 52 to the failed rebirth, uh, you know, six different reboots of the stuff. Like we all, we saw what happened during that whole type of era in DC. And some people do, I'll be honest with you. Some people, as far as the runs go, it seems like they pick out their favorite writers in the run. I think that's all you can, uh, yeah. writers, stories, you know I mean? I think stories are writers in the can, run. Yeah. That's all you can hope for at some point. It's just, you know what, if they like the story, you know, that's all you. Can, yeah, that's all you can do with it. I mean, and they might not like the next story. You know, like, you know, another another example uh, inside baseball is that uh, they came to me after re rebirth, or I think it was, and uh, Dan, uh, what's his face, Brian uh, Bendis had uh, was there. I'm not sure which version this was. But he would. Um, uh, thank you. <laughs> um, <laughs> So if that was rebirth, so at one point they he was doing this uh, character. Uh, who was the super evil character that he had been planning on? Uh, not red. Somebody he like turned out to be the bad guy. It was. Do you remember this? Yeah. Red line death, not red death, wasn't it? It was. Uh... Ah, damn. That's the newest one. The newest one's red death, isn't it? Who was the one before that? It, it was. Uh, well, whoever it was. For a year, about nine months a year, they said, listen, uh, Red Hood is going to be the biggest, baddest, evilest supervillain uh, that DC has. We're going to make him the biggest supervillain. I'm like, you know, I just spent seven years trying to make him into the bit more of a hero and more about, you know, redemption and blah, blah, blah. And I said, but if that's where you're going, then I feel it is incumbent upon me to, when he gets to that point, when the big reveal comes, the readers will be able to look back at the last year of Red Hood and say, okay, I get it. You know, he wasn't, you know, he wasn't who he was when Scott started him, but in the last year's worth of stories, we see where, you know, uh, Artemis and Pizarro left and he was alone and he had, you know, and uh, what's his face? Uh, Ray, Ray Harper had died and everything was set. Manhunter, was that the character? Okay. Um, so the thing is, is that was going to be the big reveal is he was going to take off the mask and blah, blah. And I felt, you know what? I feel like I'm uh, not ruining this character. I'm, I'm taking away a lot of what I put in there, but for the purpose of the character, I would bring him to that point and then hand him off, hand him off. Yeah. So I get to that point, ready to hand him off. And then they go, yeah, we decided it's not going to be Red Hood. It's going to be some other character. And I'm like, uh, uh, you know, so, and then Bizarro and Artemis came back and they're like, hey, make it like it was, like bouncy and fun. I'm like, uh, <laughs> you know, like, so, but it was things like that, like where they would say, you know, so when you say stick the landing, I mean, what the landing that would have been? Yeah. So like, okay. Uh, like, let's like start off. Just, yeah. It's like yeah. I mean, it's always the end. People, it, people, it's like the Sopranos. Like people love the Sopranos and they say they never stuck in the Sopranos. Johnny I don't Cates want is a good example. Ah, see, I wasn't was trying to mention people. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I mean, my yeah, bad. I didn't mean, did I say that out loud? Yeah. People I say that. I didn't people, hear what you said, would you say? 
Donny Cates. <laughs> they say Donny Cates, all the all the stuff he does. Oh, yeah. He never he never hits the land. I mean, good dude writes good stuff. He does tell great stories, and the beginning of his stories are ob- objectively better than the finishing parts of his stories. You know, what well, I mean? that's like sometimes you know, to me when you say stick a landing, they're sticking a landing, and then there's you're approaching the runway, and they go, oh, excuse me, you're going to have to uh, uh, go to uh, Washington Dulles Airport. There's a spot for you over there. And right. You're like, what? Yeah. They're not even sticking the landing. It's like, hey, you know, we want you to taxi over the runway for three or four hours and then go out to And that's what I think. I think with him, too, because he a lot of times he's moving on to a different project, and then people are like, well, he – but he's going to end this really good. It's like, well, he's also moving on to do a different project. So I don't know if he is actually, you know, trying to even do the landing or if they've already started putting him over, excuse me. So if they've already put him over to the other, to the other project, which is part of the problem of why he can't finish it up. So, um, but yeah, I mean, he, this is, you know, I mean, I, I think that's part of the problem where people don't understand it. I'm surprised that more artists, don't come out and say like, Hey, listen, this is what happened behind the scenes. I don't think, I think people are a little bit, I think people are, don't exactly understand how the editorial process works and, or, or, or the publishing process works in a lot of this stuff. And well, the other thing though, too, is it is, it is a very, uh, you know, I mean, I would respect somebody if they said, like, if I said, you know what, fans, I'm sorry, this whole thing with Red Hood got fucked up, you know, sorry about that. That would be one thing if I said it and I left. Yeah. But if you're like literally, if you're cashing the checks, it's like uh, okay, so you're cashing the checks. Yeah. What are you like, gonna say? Yeah. 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 You know, and for when yeah. when people do insult or they say, "Oh, I got in a fight with this editor," and it's like, you know what? Then then leave. You know, and go. Yeah. Because you know how that's gonna go for you. You're next. Yeah. You're not writing three books. You're not writing one book anymore. You're gonna get put as you know you'll get spot work and stuff like that so let's get you're going to be done either way so it doesn't matter i mean it just doesn't matter uh at the end point for that what was your, what was what what was your favorite we you said it was the x-men uh star trek series was one of your favorite things but what was your favorite probably run to write oh i don't know do you have a uh we have 30 minutes to an hour and we can go through your list. If you no, want. no, I was going to ask if you, uh, I was going to ask how we many. We want to tier rank them out real quick. We should tier rank them. I'm just, no, I'm just wondering like, like how many girlfriends you've had and which was your favorite. I mean, it's like, you know, like it's such yeah, a hard, no, no, no. you know, like there was so many There's different things for that, that, so that many different about. reasons, but um, you like I each did, one different. For each There's always one or two you stock on Facebook. Yeah, um, so that's true. Um, you know, I don't know, like, <laughs> it's true. No, it's not true. <laughs> I would say that, I mean, yeah, I don't know. I mean, there's just, uh, I don't want to sound like a dick, but I would say that I wouldn't, I don't think I. All right, how about this? If he called you up and said, you can do starting it with a brand new volume and you can do whatever you want mm-hmm. on any one of the past projects you did you only get to choose one which one would you go like okay cool, i would cool. negotiate and i would say <laughs> no no I, no 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 listen okay. i'd say i because i don't ever hold on let me put do... my boss chain on real quickly because i'm going to give i'm either going to reject your i'm uh-huh. going to put my boss chain on and then i'm going to either accept or reject your proposal uh-huh. all right let's go i always say and anybody that ever that i ever work with i always say the same thing i say i don't want to do the last thing i want to do the next thing you know I want to yeah. do, you know, and even like Red uh, Teen Titans was a perfect example of like, you know, when they first said to write it, I said, sure. And I started writing at what was essentially issue 101. And they said, you know, we like this, but that's not what New 52 is. New 52 is it's brand new. You're never going to have anything to do. I mean, uh, these characters have never met. They don't have any of the relationships we know. Uh, they're meeting all each other for the first time. Go. And I'm like, okay and i wrote it from that point of view and i liked what i did and yet there were so many people that are like well you know that's not how wally not wally uh that's not how bart and tim would react or you know or act with each other i go well they have just met each other like i can get them to that point of like in their relationship like that's where they are i said but you know, for right now, but, you, two, but you know, you know, now going back and looking at like 
that sells like that run sells for us. Like that mm -hmm. sells for, like when we go to cons, that run sells for us. Uh, original, the new 52, right? Yes. Like yeah. that run I sells enjoyed, for us. I enjoyed yeah, it. Like people in, I, now yeah, in I retrospect, enjoyed, people yeah. love that run. Like yeah. it's not a run that people are like, it's not super girl. You uh -huh. know what I mean? Like there's certain runs where you're like, oh, I'm going to be stuck with this run for a while. That's mm -hmm. not one we're stuck with. People mm -hmm. pull that. That's one of the runs they pull out. So like as much as there's a, you know, that's old man, not my, not my oatmeal shit. You know well, what I mean? And, like, and, oh, but well, the, this isn't the way it was. So I don't yeah, like it. But, the, hard, the hard part was though that they said, that's what you have to do. So I said, that's what I'm going to do. And I did it with Red Hood. I did it with Superboy. I did it with uh, whatever. And, you know, a year later, they're like, um, <laughs> let's start to push it back to, you know, and it was because, you know, God bless them with the, you know, Justice League and Batman and, you know, they had their followers. And so it was schizo it was very schizophrenic at the time. So like you say, you know, people have whatever. If people like that first six issues of Teen Titans, I'm elated if they like the second uh, six I'm elated if they write the name, then it's great. You know, then they enjoyed the books and stuff. But yeah. Um, but what I would say, just let you keep going. Oh, sorry, go ahead. Oh no, to answer your question though, like like I say, I always want to do the next thing. I don't want to do the last thing. And like with Age of Apocalypse, uh, you know, I can always tell when they're publishing Age of Apocalypse because the royalty checks come in and suddenly they're like, oh, I'm like, what's going on? Okay, they're, you know, <laughs> yeah, something's happening. And, uh, but to me, I, at one point, as I was leaving Marvel, I had said, you know what I think would be cool would be to have a picture of Apocalypse and he's looking all evil as crap. And it just says, uh, you didn't think it could happen here. And then you open up and there's a two page ad and you just see like a decimated New York city. Yeah. And you say, this is the real age of apocalypse. It's here. It's now yeah. it's you know, yeah. like what happens if everything that we saw in age of apocalypse, apocalypse is suddenly, yeah. Well, not Dude. that, not that it went on, but that it was the outcome. Yeah. Like it's like, yeah. he's created that, like he like, like Galactus eating the earth or, Triton taking it like what right. if apocalypse really won? And did if you, you thought okay, can I ask apocalypse you is weird, this is gonna be crazy. Yeah, can I so ask if you I had the more? chance, that's what I would uh do. You would do a second do age something. of apocalypse? I, I wouldn't do a second <laughs> like age of apocalypse. Post, I would post do the age of apocalypse. No, I don't think you're I don't think you're hearing me. I think yeah. what I and I was like, what I would say is is that you know, if you were gonna do if you do a, a, an apocalypse story. You yes. know that eventually the X Men are going to beat him up and right, you know, right, right. throw him in uh, under a pyramid or something. Sure. But what if you just committed to no for the next two years, this guy shows up and just demolishes cities and da 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 and like takes over and apocalypse is you know maybe he kills Doctor Doom maybe he you know uh, Galactus shows up and he's like you're not going to eat this world I just started so he blows up a lot like whatever like right. just make a, like make an age of apocalypse but make us live through it right you know with all the, the characters that we know and love yeah. i mean i think that would be so cool but i do that so would be, if I had that the would be chance, pretty awesome actually yeah that's, yeah. Like, that's awesome yeah, yeah. so he's if i had the chance to go back heroes but that he's not actually fighting any heroes you're just watching him go to, and do nothing but devastation well, it's a yeah. continuation of the story like you yeah. keep going yeah yeah. Because they yeah. did come out with an Age of Apocalypse again. Or, or oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So many times. Garbage. Yeah. It was I was expecting the stuff you guys were doing mm -hmm. in the second. And they've done this a lot of times. Yeah. Like, if you're even going to redo it, like, keep us into that story. Thank you, like, Astro. Keep us into that story line. You know what I mean? Uh-huh. And I'll be, I'll be honest with you. I was surprised. Don't be honest, don't be honest Marco. Well, okay. I don't have time I, for honesty. I wasn't a huge fan. I wasn't a huge fan of... Uh, Generation X, but Generation Next, I thought was one of the better uh, cross. Like, I think it rose up compared to some of the some of the books were a little like X Killer was kind of soft and X Man was. Wait, kind of you know soft what the series? But like, mm -hmm. it was it, it was out of the main storyline. It was one of the top tier breakdown storylines that came out of that, which was really cool. Uh, I thought it I thought it did really well. Well, you know what's um, interesting is that when we broke it down, up until then, Fabian would do the. X-Men crossovers. And he would say, 
in this issue, this has to happen, and this issue, this has yeah. to happen, this issue, this has to happen. And I was like, Ethel Merman, I'm like, I got a great idea. And so we did uh, Age of Apocalypse. Uh, I mean, we did, yeah, Age of Apocalypse Alpha and Omega. Mm-hmm. And I said to the gang in the, in the boardroom, I said, this is where Age of Apocalypse Alpha is going to end, and this is where it picks up. And whatever you want to do in the in the in, in those four issues, you should do it. And they're like, "Well, wh- what do you mean? You can't just you can't just say we can do whatever." I go, "No, really, you can do whatever. All yeah. you need to do is make sure these characters are on the bridge <laughs> in the end of that issue. Yeah. And, you know, who's alive, who's dead, da da da." So, you know, for about a week, they were like, "Oh, you're being lazy." I go, "No, I'm not being lazy. I'm, I'm saying you have the freedom to do. You know, it's not going to be like a regular crossover where like you have to stop and stop what you're doing and do this and da da. da. However, you want to treat your four issues." So and then they then people really got into it and that was really uh, fun. Like I think X Factor was uh, by John Francis Moore and I don't know whatever happened to him, but he uh, I thought it was a great story with uh, Scott and Alex and but when yeah, with the two brothers being opposite what you would have thought they were. I mean that was yeah. I mean it was so one of the reasons I collect the whole run, I have multiple collections of the whole run is because when I finish collecting them all I read the whole thing again from start to finish. So like mm-hmm. I. It takes a while. Actually, now it's taking longer than it used to. It used to be pretty easy. You just have to go to different stores and be like, oh, I'll take one from this store. But now, or this con or whatever. But now it's like, it's actually harder to find some of the books. Um, mm-hmm. But I thought they did a great job because that is it, right? Like there are certain characters you thought there's no way they're going to die off. There's no way they're going to kill them. And then it did. But the whole, the story, every single Terry story they had in there, all the spinoffs are their own stories, which is awesome because you could pick up five or six books or four books, whatever it was, you can pick mm-hmm. those up, read those. And you don't actually have to read the whole. Well, that's what people always say. They go, they'd say, what order do we have to read them? I go, uh, one, two, three, and four. <laughs> and one, two, three, and four. And yeah. one, two, three, and four. Yeah. You know, and just read it. They're like, we're not, you know. But I will tell you, when you talk about Generation Next, I, and this is when you, you were uh, accusing me of uh, planning things in advance. <laughs> just, just teasing, but what happened? Well, I mean, was, you did. Right? A, hey, you did with the Age of Apocalypse. You told them this is the ending, so you didn't play. Well, no, no, no. Game. I said they. I said yeah. <laughs> they just have to get to wherever. But what happened was, I uh, around issue three, I was dating a girl. Her name was Micah, and we broke up, and it was very sad. But I was really, really, really sad. So it's probably the only time I was really sad about being broken up with. I mean, I broke up with her. No, but um. So yeah, you don't talk her on Facebook. We got that. I right. sat down to type <laughs> out, uh, type out uh, Generation X, Generation X, the last issue. Yeah. I yeah. sat down. I'm like, everybody dies, <laughs> <laughs> and that, and like when people read it, they're like, oh my god, there was so sad. With Paige, you know, and the, the doors are closing, and she just looks at you know yeah. Peter, and she's like, you're really gonna, and Peter. Just, <laughs> You know, and then he goes back to uh, Kitty, and he's like, "I tried to save him," and Kitty's like, "No, you didn't." So it was like, it was really, really a, a gut gut wrenching <coughs> final issue. But I didn't know it was going to be like that until I was upset about Mike and started writing, that. and then I'm like, you know, so it's kind of. Funny. I just thought it was like we have to clear this up because you know <laughs> afterwards they obviously brought back some of the other characters for different parts and stuff like that. So I was like. You know. Oh, he just killed them all off because you're eventually going to kill most of that. Most of that, but uh, it makes sense now. No, but I will tell you that when I when when we first started, uh, I wanted to uh, for years after Generation X. Well, I guess it's about a year or so. No, about a year after uh, Blink came and I killed her in Phalanx Covenant. People kept saying, "Oh, bring bring back, bring back Blink, bring back Blink, bring back Blink." Yeah, and. So then when we started Age of Apocalypse, I'm like, oh, my God, it's going to end with everybody dying. So I'm going to bring back Blink. Blink just so yeah, she, she has to die again. She's going to her off again. She's on a dick. Yeah. <laughs> just to be mean. So. Oh, nice. Um, that's pretty solid. Yeah. Oh, so, so we did that. Uh, BK's also got a question for you. He says, uh, what uh, – <clears throat> I didn't know BK actually ever left the house to go to comic conventions, but he wants to know what your comic <laughs> convention experience was like during the run. You know, what's funny is, you know, it's weird because we've all, I don't know, you, I'm sure you guys have all been to comic book conventions over the years. When I went to comic book conventions, people would, when you go to a panel, people would stand up and go, uh, 
Kitty and like, oh, well, there'll be like a the fancy stuff. You know, Rogue. Stuff. Why can't Rogue and Gamba be together? Like, it's in a, I know you brought up, you know, Belladonna, but now she's not there. And, you know, if she can get a divorce, why can't they get married? Even though they can't touch some relationships, you know, have issues, da da da. And you'd say, well, and you'd answer the question. Nowadays, especially like Marvel and DC, it just seems to me that you have somebody from the company and they go, uh, this is the cover of uh, the next issue that you already saw on uh, every website that's out there because it was in the previous catalog and now we're here in the panel. And um, Scott, why don't you see what happens here? And I go, well, you know, um, I mean, I usually just tell people what happens, but a lot of times <laughs> conventioners will go, well, this is going to lead up to something that's really exciting, and I can't tell you what it is, but it's really, really exciting. Yeah, and six like, page page. Yeah, and I feel like we're like all we're doing is watching a slideshow of the previous catalog. You are. Yeah. We are. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. That's and all the it is for that, yes. yes. Yeah. And to me, there is a time when panels were about the characters and the storyline and uh, things in the past and what are you going to do in the future? And here's a suggestion or I want to try this and da, da, da. And that's what we talked about. And now we don't talk about those things anymore. We don't yeah. get asked about them. We don't talk about them. You know, do you think that's partly because the fansies are gone? You know, I don't know. I was a huge uh, entertainment. I was just thinking about this. I was going through the airport the other day and, you know, entertainment weekly for the last two years was, entertainment monthly but nobody noticed because it was still called entertainment weekly but they mm. were putting it out less and less and less and then they stopped and i was going through the airport and i'm thinking oh, i used to love buying entertainment weekly getting on the plane reading it from the time that i sat down to the time the light went off so that i could start writing you know pull out the computer and write but like that was the time that i could read entertainment weekly. but then team z happened and every horrible thing that can happen to celebrity <laughs> is happens every day and you yeah. go and you watch it and then you watch it again on uh you know on youtube 20 and minutes later like us comments on it yeah, yeah everybody's mm -hmm. telling me about here's a clip from you know spoiler alert if you want yeah. to know how the movie ends just keep listening and and so then there's just no reason for a uh a entertainment weekly or even a, a daily newspaper by the time the newspaper is printed the next day you've already read six different articles about whatever it is, news. you know? Yeah. And so in that way, I kind of feel like, you know, I mean, I would like to like, sometimes I'd be on a panel of like 15, 20 people <coughs> mm -hmm. in the new 52 mm -hmm. and you're just sitting there doing the math going, okay, well, you know, <coughs> we're each going to be able to answer, you know, talk about the issue and then field questions and, you know, maybe. Is that one more of a publisher's question. decision or was that? I guess so. I mean, I, I think it might be because of the, uh, I, I don't know. We can go all the way back to image. It's like there was a time when, okay, I'll say this. There's a time when the creators were the superstars and that was it. Yeah. Like from the time I started the new 52, Every panel, you know, would be Dan or it would be Dan and Jim or it would be, you know, and I would just look and go like, if I was doing the X-Men and they did a panel with like Jim Galton and, you know, Steve Saffel from marketing, like, would anybody go like, <laughs> what would you, I mean, like, you know, but have I you ever been to a Diamond Summit before? Because they do that shit there and people I show did. up. It's fucking You know, horrible. it's funny you, you say that because uh, there's a, a pup, uh, there is a, um, I was writing X-Men with uh, John Romita Jr. And I'm Junior. calling him one day yeah, and he goes, uh, yeah, he goes, uh, hey, uh, Scotty, this is so much fun. I'm going to uh, Hawaii. They're sending me to Hawaii to uh, this big uh, convention. It's great. I'm like, oh. So I called up and I said, well, this is really odd because he and I are doing this book together and you flew him to Hawaii and I'm, I'm just here. And they go, oh, well, um, we'll call you back. And they call me back and they go, listen, we want you to do the retailer convention in Baltimore. 
Yeah. I go, oh, Baltimore. Oh, I said, well, I hope it's downtown <laughs> Baltimore. Baltimore. <laughs> I don't want to be. You know, it's downtown Baltimore. And they said, oh, yeah, and the panel's going to be at midnight. I go, oh, my God. This is like, this is, you really, you really am blushing here. But <laughs> it was, it turned out. It hey, it's for, a fun town. It is a fun town. I go there every year. So it's a fun town. But I, I it, get what it, you're it, saying. Yeah. It's not and Hawaii. So, uh, it's not Hawaii. Yeah. It ain't, and it's it ain't not like they go, hey, you want to stay another extra week in Baltimore? Who did you yeah, call? The publisher? You called the publisher. Uh, right. No, I probably called marketing and then marketing. Marketing, was like, oh, yeah, yeah. Well, either Scott's way. Scott's mad. We're going to, you know, what should we do? You know, like. I'll send them to Baltimore. <laughs> but that's, so you, the saddest part about this, and this is what I was actually talking to a, a show promoter now. And the mm -hmm. saddest part about this is like the promoters don't even know that. Like the promoters don't know your mark because when they well they'll call up to get a hold of X Y and Z whoever they somebody's like hey you know we've got a couple requests to go get Scott right because of whatever so they call up and they're like well does anybody have a connection if nobody locally has a connection they call whatever their connection is which is usually a marketing or a salesperson and when they call the marketing salesperson they say hey you know we like Scott for this and whatever whatever and they call him up and they book it, they will book you. Right, because they said Scott, mm -hmm. but whoever your cartoonist or whoever your uh, colorist, whatever the artist was, the other artist, not the writer, on mm -hmm. it, they won't book that person. They won't even ask. Well, them yeah, and the promoter was, nine yeah, times out of yeah. ten would take care of both. They paid yeah, for yeah. the trip for both. They yeah. they they pay it out, and they just. Well, this was this was years ago, and in years ago, like you know, oh, it's still it, going on now. Well, I'll give you, you know, but I'll give you an example of that when, um, you know, Marvel and DC used to. Pay for uh, <laughs> Marvel and DC used to uh, fly like every time I went to San Diego when I was writing the X Men, I was always flown into San Diego and they put you up. You know, Marvel would fly you in, put you up, and blah 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 blah. blah. Uh, then eventually, over years, Marvel and DC would be like, Hey, who's going to San Diego? Because we would love for you to do a panel. And then all of a sudden, they were like, Oh, I guess I have to. Find a hotel room, I guess. Right. Find air because they knew that so many people were going that they're like, why are we flying these? Why, like, are, we flying why are we spending all this money on these people when we don't have to? And so, so there was, but at that time when when they were flying uh, uh, John to Hawaii and me to Baltimore, there was uh, that was all on Marvel's time. Like Marvel, yeah. Used oh, to it was Marvel that did it? So yeah, Marvel yeah, flew them out there. Okay, yeah. So and they flew me to Baltimore. Place. Don't forget. What's that? But, <laughs> but what happened too was that I went and they said, Mark well, Nathan put, hey, time out. Mark Nathan puts on a great con out there and he does, he does a great job. Well, this wasn't a, this was just a retailer con. No, no, it's part of the yeah. retailer summit. It's part of the okay. Baltimore con. So well, I was Mark just Nathan there too. Cool. Okay. Well, I was just there. No, I'm not talking that. to you. I'm not talking to you. I'm talking no, 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 to you. No, no, Did no, they at least give okay, you like yeah. a tropical breeze air freshener in your hotel room to make <laughs> that, you feel like you were in Hawaii? That would have been nice. So. Um, <laughs> but what happened was I get there and Lou Bank comes up and he goes, hey, listen, um, we want you to give the keynote speech. And I'm like, whatever, you know, I've been a, I was a stand-up comic again, like for six years. Like I don't have yeah. any, you know, you put me in front of a crowd. I'm like, okay, whatever. Blah, blah, blah. And they go, we want you to announce uh, age of apocalypse. So I'm like, okay, great. So I go up and I announce age of apocalypse and the retailers are like, you're canceling all the X books. What? And I go, yeah, yeah, it'll be fine. Da -da, we're going to be doing. And I had seen all the art. I knew it was going to be like this, this amazing, amazing thing. Yeah. And, they were like getting like like if they could have put me up on their shoulders and with torches and carried me out yeah. of the room, they would have. There, everybody, because no one knew the idea. You're going to cancel all the experts. Like that's the only thing that sells. What are you talking about? That uh, has happened. That they have. There's notorious. Uh, there's notorious ones of those summits that have turned out with people yelling and screaming. Some throwing stuff on stage. Yeah. Um, yeah. But they didn't tell me that. They were just like, "Oh, go up and talk about it." Oh yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> So I don't stay. Uh, unfortunately, I don't stay for much of it. Like people just don't even. I come in, say hi to a couple of people, and people are like, "Shh, what are you doing?" I'm like, "They're going over the fucking previews." If you want to know the shit, just look up a preview book. I'm not eating. No offense, but I'm not eating the buffet that's been sitting out for three hours that all you people picked your nose and touch. See, a, a minute and, uh, ago he was uh, raving about this guy's. Uh... He's still nice. No, he's a nice guy. He's a nice guy. He's like, he oh, just serves. He I'm just saying. He just serves he crappy food. Be, see, that's how you do it. You got to you gotta say yeah. something nice, and then you come back and say, it's the same way he does stuff all the time. So I'm doing the same thing he does. It's okay. But, I'm yeah, I'm just not doing that portion of it, right? Like, I just mm – -hmm. I get what you're saying. And then to hear people complain about stuff, it's like, why do I want to be in a room with a bunch of sweaty people that smell bad complaining about – 
oh, this book came damaged or you're going to get rid of a character. <laughs> it's true. Scott, you just <laughs> said they wanted to put me in torches and, and Frankenstein me out here. You just I said was... Frank, they were going to do the Frankenstein monster shit out uh, yes, the door. But I, I, I didn't say that anybody smelled. <laughs> Have you not been in a con before? They smell. Actually, you know, there's a. Actually, they do smell. Yes. You no, know, in uh, in. Uh, our, I was just at one today. Yes. In Australia, they have it's called uh, Armageddon. It's not clear plastic. The Armageddon card, and we call yeah. it the uh, Under Armageddon card. <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> dude, dude. Uh, what, I, I can tell stories. <laughs> I can tell stories, but most of them aren't appropriate. Like, what is your favorite like, city to go to, though? Oh, yeah. Well, you know what? I will tell you this one story. Is yeah. I uh, was asked to go to a comic book uh, a comic book store signing which used to be huge in the old days now i think it's less so but i go to the uh signing in uh los angeles so they fly me out and they put me in this uh literally literally a motel six right and i am there and i'm there for 10 minutes i have this deathly uh deathly fear of uh of uh um Earthquakes, yeah, earthquake. And so I'm sitting there and I'm just like lying on the bed, going, okay, this is, yeah, I'm in like a strip mall, blah, blah, blah. And uh, all of a sudden I hear this rumble and it's like, and it's like, you know, the things are in there, you hear this noise, and then it goes, and it rumbles off. And then you hear these uh, motel room keys. And the maid knocked on the door and let herself into the motel room down the, uh, down the hallway. Mm -hmm. So it wasn't an earthquake. It was just this maid's car. <laughs> I thought you were going to say it was a vibrating bed. No, I no, like, no. Oh, hell no. Oh, that's too so, good. That is way too good. So I'm like, okay. So then about a year later, I was on the X-Men and they called me up and they go, hey, will you come out again? I go, absolutely not. I absolutely no, no way. And they're like, why? We, we loved having you. I go, yeah, but you, you stuck me in a... a you know, a strip mall in the middle of nowhere in whatever. And so they're like, okay, we'll, we'll fix it. So they put me up at like a four seasons and they gave me an SUV to drive around for a week. I'm like, Hey, I can get reached. <laughs> but, so it was pretty I, know, I remember a number of years back, he came out, Matt and I live in Phoenix, Arizona. And hey, Matt, I remember, you, I remember you came out to a con here in Arizona. <laughs> what was it? Do you, did you like coming out to Phoenix? Did they did they put you in a Motel Six? <laughs> Do you remember um, Phoenix? Well, I mean, conventions are usually you know usually they they book swaths of rooms in you know a nice hotel. Usually the hotel that the convention. In fact, if it's if you're talking about Amazing Comic Con, you know, mm -hmm. yeah, because they have a hotel right next to the convention center. And uh, uh, I think it's the Marriott downtown, isn't it, Kyle? Yeah, is it? Next to I'm not sure. So. But it's uh. It's always, uh, yeah, no, I mean, I've never had a, a bad, or really a bad experience since then. Once in a while, you get like, a, you know, we want you to uh, perform career day at, uh, at little Jimmy's uh, high school. Yeah, or worse, <laughs> like up in Syracuse if you're free. And I'm like, sure. Oh, whoa, whoa. Easy and, on Syracuse. And, no, no, but I mean, it's just like, it's not like a. It's not like you're going to like uh, the New Orleans Comic Con or yeah. anything. It's like you go there and go to Career Day at Westfield Elementary to talk yeah. about being a comic book writer. Yeah, and and I I, I have a I have a thing where I, I never say no, not out of desperation, just because you know what? If they've gone through the Rolodex to the point where they have come up to my name, they <laughs> need somebody, on you. yeah, they need somebody to to go. So, <laughs> but but even in a situation like that, you at least get like a, a holiday in or so. So it's not you know. It was just that one time, and it always makes me laugh because I was like, <laughs> but. "Listen, always ask for the Hyatt." <laughs> always ask for that. Yeah. Always ask for Hyatt. Never who, go wait, to so who booked Hollywood. Marvel booked you in a Motel Six? No, no, uh, no, no. Um, that was uh, uh, the comic book uh, convention. That was a book. Uh, you guys did a comic book store. out there in L.A. Yeah, that was a comic book store. You know, it wasn't even <laughs> L.A. proper. It was like I landed in L.A. and then we drove to like. Cerritos and it's like, mm. okay, I'm gonna Cerritos, <laughs> and I can tell by all your expressions, you're like, oh yeah, Cerritos. No, like uh, I don't. Yeah, I still don't think you, I, there, there had to be something better than a Motel Six and Cerritos to put you. In. Yeah, it doesn't sound like it's a well-traveled town. Well, you know, it's funny afterwards. They're like, uh, hey, 
uh, we want to take you to a strip club tonight after after we're I'm like, well, I, I, not a strip club guy, but and right, especially after they said the Motel Six, where the strippers look like. I mean, that's they probably yeah. I mean, I saw them coming and going. Why would I have to? Yeah, right. why have to go to a club? Yeah, you don't have to pay for it. You can just open up your window. But they're like, uh, well, we'll take you out to a bar, and, and I said, well, this this place, the sign looks very good. It's, uh, Marie Collender's looks like it's a good. <laughs> like, you want to go to Marie Collender's? <laughs> yeah, whatever. I'm just you know. I'm that's a like very, Bob uh, Evans, right? That's what this yeah, shit is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just a very simple uh yeah. like if I'm spending my money, then yeah, I'll go to like uh uh is that I, why you know. is that why a lot of the newer artists and writers are skeptical because they hear stories from old timers like you that are talking about like some greasy dude wearing the toupee, setting him up in a motel six and taking him out to freaking strip <laughs> well, clubs or wait, no, no, I mean well strip clubs was a big thing for a while. And Eric Larson said my favorite thing. He said Going to a strip club is like going to the ice cream museum. You know? What the fuck's like, the point? Yeah. yeah. Like you can't you can't have no, any of the ice cream. You can't make <laughs> anything in it. Yeah. Yes, I, we know Whatever. where the joke goes. We know where the joke goes. I mean, it wasn't, it wasn't I wasn't trying to be dirty. It's just the idea. No, no, that, no, we like, get it. They say like, dumb jokes. It. It's like, okay, there it is. It's in front of you, but what's the point? Yeah, what good know? is it? Yeah. And so uh <laughs> but so yeah, that was just always like it was a big thing in the uh 90s. People were always trying to drag drag you to strip clubs yeah and i'm sure many people went you know i'm sure it was a fun time but one time robin his butt up jeans probably went all the time i'm telling you i guarantee it as a matter of fact this is a funny story one time i was in uh this producer wanted me to write a script and we're arguing back and forth whether it should be you know twenty five thousand or fifty thousand or whatever going back and forth because there's a small indie movie Mm -hmm. and he goes, oh, hey, let's go to uh, Vegas, have some business there. You can meet with whatever. So I said, okay, so we go to Vegas. We go into the uh, casino, and in five minutes, he loses $10,000. Oh, Jesus. And I'm Jesus. thinking, wow. you fucking idiot. If you had just given me that money, I could have stayed in Vegas, and I'd be writing right now. Like, whatever, like, yeah, you know, yeah. why are we, we here? Were, we don't... We are going to 25 and 30 and 50, though. yeah. Yeah, so then he goes, uh, let's go to this, uh, we'll go to the strip club. And I'm thinking, okay, yeah, because you haven't thrown away enough money. Let's go to the strip club. So I'm sitting there talking and uh, he's with this girl and he pays her to for a lap dance and she gets on. She's like grinding, right? And the girl that I'm talking to, her name is Chelsea. And she goes, uh, <laughs> she says, do you want me to, uh, she says, you want me to dance for you? I go, no, that's all right. We, we can talk. You seem really interesting. And so uh, she, we're like talking for a few he's, minutes. He's like me. I like him. I like him. Go we're, ahead, ta- we're talking for a few minutes, and all of a sudden, she looks at me. She goes, "You know, Scott, if you worked out, you would be so hot." Oh, Jesus fuck! And I said, <laughs> "You know, Chelsea, <laughs> if I wanted to be insulted by a woman I'm not having sex with, I would have stayed married." But that's good. That's a good so, one. Well, that was yeah. my. Uh, they burned through a lot of that money, though, huh? That's what's that? They burned through a lot of that money, though, huh? <clears throat> oh yeah, I mean it was, but that's what they do. They invite yeah. you and they're like, "Hey, wow, wow, whatever." That's you know. Do Do you have a different approach in your creative process when it comes from writing a script for a comic versus writing a script for a movie like Happy Death Day, or, or is it relatively the same process, just a different medium? Uh, it is. It's relatively the same in the sense that, well, I mean, it's, I'll tell you the way it's mostly different. The way it's the same is that everything I do, I start out with a, a, a yellow legal pad and I write the beginning on end by hand. So mm-hmm. I know where I'm going. And then and if it's a, a comic book, do I have an example? Uh, no, this isn't. If it's a comic book, then I just number one through 22 or one through eight or whatever it is. And I just have a sentence like, you know, gambit throwing card would be on page one and then two and three, just so that I know I have enough room for the story. Um, With a comic book, I like to, uh, once I know where I'm going, I write as I go. And in a movie, I uh, I always write the treatment first. And when I write a treatment, I write every single slug line. So it would be like exterior, Scott's house, there's a light on. Interior, Scott is 
doing a Zoom call. These are the four people on the Zoom call. Yeah. Uh, every once in a while, he drinks his uh, raspberry lemonade and keeps trying to remember to stress that to them because people at home are going to think that he's uh, drinking cocktails all all through the uh, uh, conversation. So once that's written, like once every single scene is written, then I'll go through and write the story. But I've noticed over the years that to me, when somebody comes up and goes, oh my God, I've been writing on the script. I've been writing a script that's taken me like four years to write the script. And I'm like, well, you didn't write the treatment, right? Oh, no, no, because I, I know. Uh, and it's like, you know, it, it'd be like trying to uh, make uh, the most beautiful woman you've ever seen and starting with, you know, the intestines or something. You no, know, you have right. to start with the skeleton. So you have things to, you know, you have places to put this and that. And that. so like when I'm writing a script, especially, I always, always write the whole thing out so I know where it is before I start. <clears throat> That's also an acting technique that they use for the actors to feel like how they immerse themselves into roles too, is like write the treatment for the character out there so that you can build off that and be better so you don't turn in some maniac manic that's like the joker and end up killing yourself but like i mean like it's very interesting that that's the way you do it and probably seems like it probably would would help out that's interesting well you know is more, oh, oh, i was gonna no, say no. is that more so for like the direction for the actor where you're more detailed in a movie script versus like a comic book it has to do with freedom like you're giving the artist to have the freedom to kind of no if you if you ago. if you read my scripts i have a lot of uh you know, like some people be like, uh, you know, uh, exterior Bayfield University. It's been around since 1776. And, you know, it has Ivy Leagues and it da, 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 da. Whereas I'll be like, you know, Bayfield University, brick and ivory, snotty, you know, the place, you know. And like, so I try to give everybody, a, I let them figure out what the place is, you know, and I let them, I, I like give them a sense of tone, but I'm not, I, I'm more interested in tone than I am in setting, you know? Yeah. Um, I will tell you this one uh, uh, incident because I always loved it is uh, Stan, you know, Stan and I became, we didn't know each other when I started, of course, but eventually over the years we came really close and, uh, one time we were working on, uh, I was working on a script for him and uh, it was supposed to go to this other uh, outside producer, but he's like, oh, lobby, I don't, I don't understand how you do it with all these notes with the writers and the, I mean, the, the producers and the studio and the network. He goes, it drives me crazy. How do you do it? And I said, well, you know, Stan, the first draft is art and every draft after that is commerce. You know, and so 90 times out of 100, when I write a script, it's like Happy Death Day. I write a script that I want to watch as a movie and then they buy it and then they come in and go, oh, you got to change this and this and this. And, this. and but once they buy it, it's theirs. And so it's all about commerce. But at least I get the opportunity to write the script that I want to make. Like Happy Death Day is a good example. Happy Death Day was very, very funny. But uh, a lot of that was, it was shot very funny. My version, my, my initial version was funny, but it was much darker. Like, for example, uh, you find out that, you know, first she dies and she gets killed a bunch of ways and it's kind of fun. And then you start to realize, she starts to realize that, oh, wait a minute, this hurts. Like something's going, something's happening in my body. And in this, in the movie, when they shot it, they left it there at, oh, on my side. And somebody goes, oh, you're dying. And she's like, oh. In my, in the original version of the script, she comes into, uh, she wakes up and she immediately runs in the bathroom and her uh, roommate is like, hey, what's going on? Are you Okay. She's making all these noises and she's like, I'm fine. And you see that she's taking duct tape and she's literally like duct taping her ribs together. And she's like duct taping her collarbone into play. Like she's literally, if she does not solve this mystery, she is going to be dead. So even though like with, um, what do you call it? Bill Murray, 
yeah, he just lived until he figured out, oh, I have to be a better person and blah, blah, blah. But with her, because it was a horror movie, there was this ticking clock that was in place that if she did not pull this off, she was going to die. But when it came time to shoot the movie, those scenes just left. So, so you know. It ended up being a good movie. What's that? I said it's, it still ended up being a great movie. Oh, I, it's a great, I mean, yeah, I think Christopher Landon did an excellent job. So, you know. Well, and she, I mean, she did a great job. Everybody in the movie did a great job. Yeah. I've got a question. Except for the writer. What? Um, <laughs> so, Who said so they have you, Huh? That would be uh, Cardi West. Yeah, just yeah. oh hey, Cardi West. There we go. Um, nice to meet you. So, do you think that um, with the writing today, like in the younger people coming in, that the veterans like have experienced more in life, so their stories are more interesting than what the new writers are coming in with, like experience in life? Do you think that has any impact on like in today, like the writing that goes on? I I do not. I, I do not know the answer to that question because I don't uh, read other comics. I do have a rule that I started when I very first uh, started to get some success, which is that if anybody ever sends me a script, whether it's a comic script or a movie script, I will look at it because I remember sleeping on my... Uh, brother-in-law's couch and knowing nobody and having this dream of becoming a writer someday. And I know what it's like to be on the outside of that. And so I always said that I would read something. So I am exposed to people reading things, but I can't necessarily say it's their age because this uh, young woman three, about, it was about a month ago, she said, uh, looking for a mentor, will you read this? And I know, because I've been on the other end of that, that she probably sent that letter to, you know, 60 people. Again, it's like, it's like when I show up at a convention, it's because they've gone through <laughs> the Rolodex. Similarly, she, although she did like to write her, but she uh, completely blew me away, like, in what she was able to do like you guys know jump scares in a movie when you're like yeah saying there and you you know somebody is behind the mirror and they turn and go ah yeah i've never i've never had this experience she managed to jump scare me with the script as i was i was like ah! and i'm like oh, yeah. i've never seen anybody do this so i mean she's 22 and she is you know she's really 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 very talented so i don't know that age uh I yeah, because you were young I, once too when you were doing it. I, like you were young it, when you were doing it. So. Like I yeah. can just see that I know that the internet has some of the crazy stuff anybody could think of. So a lot of people experience that. So I could see that they, you know, so like like basically what I was meaning like is like going to war and stuff like that. Like uh, Stan Lee and those guys that wrote back then, they had life experiences and stuff like that regarding mm -hmm. to today's, um, you know, like. YouTube streamers and stuff like that. People that are getting jobs. You know. mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, I mean, no, not YouTube you know. streamers, but just like online in general. Like anybody can hear what you have to say. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, I'm sure that there's artists well, you know, that are getting picked yeah. up by Instagram. Yeah. Well, and then there's also the idea that like, you know, if you, uh, you know, without talking politics, sometimes I'll read, I'll see something on that'll be like, oh, this post was here. And you read the post and it's like the most vile, rude, obnoxious, inconsiderate, horrible <laughs> thing you could say about someone. And then you look underneath and they have like four likes. Yeah. And mm -hmm. you're like, like, is that's that the internet. Cool? That's how the internet works. Yeah, but I it's mean, like, <laughs> is that what you want to put out in the, is that what that's you want how the internet works. the world? Like, is yeah. that, you know, like, and so maybe it's, you know, but I mean, like, I think that's a little bit, I think that's a little bit off too, Hart, or Hartman, for no offense, but like, you brought up Lee, yeah, it did go, but the whole 90s happened with nobody well, no, I'm just asking going to war there. It's, and, a, and like, it's, it's know, a general I mean, question. I'm asking about, like, the experiences of people who, because, uh, like, a lot of people are, that uh, are in, t like, the last two years, how nobody's been six feet apart and staying inside, for instance. Like, just, it just seems like, um, a lot of the 
people who like the woke culture and things like that aren't going and fighting over in another country, you know, and yeah, then neither did you. No, I know. I'm not a writer. What are you talking about? And I'm not claiming, like, neither did, like asking, almost 90% of the people before that. Well, I, I will say, I will say this. Writing. I will say this, that as I got, as I have gotten older, there is the anxiety as a writer that Hollywood is for young people and uh, it's a young person's medium. And what I've discovered as I got older is that the stuff you write as you get older, you're writing from experiences where you have way more experiences than people yeah. who are younger. Yeah. So but that's even, how it's always been, correct? Uh, I don't know. I mean, I, I can, I mean, like somebody told me once that most comic book writers have like this seven year window mm -hmm. of relevancy. Mm -hmm. And I'm essentially in my 35th year, right? you know, and I think part of that is because I am always trying to do the next thing. thing. Mm -hmm. um, but having said that, I think if you look at most comedians, like not comedians, um, John Francis Moore is a perfect example. Like that X factor was amazing. And I can't even find him on the internet. I can't find him, you know, I can't find him on Facebook. I can't find an obituary. Yeah. I can't find, you know, like, he just, mm -hmm. you know, uh, who was the other one? Um, well, either well, way, I, I think I mean, to your you point. Some of you brought uh, earlier, Syl Sylvester was huge. Yeah. Like back in the 90s, if you said the name, everybody knew him. And mm -hmm. no offense to him now, but if you say the name, there's a lot of generations that don't know who, like, no offense, they don't know who he is. Like, well, when, when New 52 started, I, you know, I did look at some of the message things and people were like saying like, who the hell is Scott Lobdell and why would they give him three books? My point is, yeah. And I'm thinking, you don't know who Scott Lobdell is, really? Like, <laughs> right. And you're, on, and you're on a message board? I mean, yeah, like, I, I, even, if, even if you think I suck, you should at least. Right. You should. You should. But that happens. Have an to, idea. Yeah. But that happens to, I mean, uh -huh. unfortunately for, you're you're lucky enough to get older, right? And you're lucky enough to be around for the industry for a while. We're all lucky enough to get older. We've, we've far been from being cool for many years. Like, it's way past what we, you're never going to be the coolest as you were at your coolest point, right? Which was. Also, youth for some reason has that coolness factor to it. So okay, as long as you can better, this is, <laughs> you're not as cool. So, as when, when, so Stanley was 39 when when Spider Man made his first appearance. Mm -hmm. So he was 39. Yeah. Like so, we've got. I'm sure that there's younger writers like you know, 2021 20, just starting out. I was wondering if he thinks that the effect of like what they've went through had any impact on it that's what i was well, you know it's, it's interesting you bring up sam because you know when stan started marvel i mean you you guys probably know this story and if you don't i mean if you do i'm sorry for no, uh, go ahead. saying it again but you know stan was a 40 year old guy who'd been doing comic books for almost 20 years and he had he was like you know what I, i'm done i'm out i don't have anything left to say and his wife was like saying listen if you feel that way then just do what you want to just do what you want to do like who cares? You're you're out anyway. Yeah. And he's like, you know that book or you know uh, Justice League. It's like, oh, we, we show up and everything is great. And da, da, da. he goes, you know, I I just want to do like a the word dysfunctional wasn't around then. He goes, but like, what about a group where they're like don't like each other? You know, yeah. like a family. How how do families get like they don't always get along? Like you know the brothers fight with each other and the you know and. And then that became Fantastic Four, you know. Fantastic Four, yeah. And uh, you know, he's like, "Oh, Batman is so stupid with this, uh, you know, teenage sidekick. Like, why would he hang out? Why would he hang out with a teenage sidekick? It's ridiculous. If you wanted to be a superhero and you were a kid, you'd have to have powers and you'd have to, you know, call yourself Spider Man so that people respected you, you know. And so it was really his last straw. Yeah, and well, it was, it was his last straw, but it was also like the freedom that he gave himself to just be you know really creative i think to your point cardi is that you know with age there comes you know i mean marco will tell you that when you get older no one cares anymore <laughs> but well you're not no i didn't say that i said you're not you've already not passed cool, your point of coolness cool. yeah. you can't you are no i'm sorry but we're not none of us are we're not that cool it's your point of coolness like the highest of your point right there's you're, there's a highest point of you being as good looking as you're going to be. There's a highest point as how cool you're going to be. And there's Damn, I never got there yet. 
yeah, well, that sucks. You're not going to get there. So, <laughs> like, I'm just saying, you already got there. It just wasn't where you hoped to be. But there is a point of coolness where, like, the younger group just – that's how society works. The younger kids are always going to be cooler than us. We're not going to get what they're doing, but, like, they're just going to be cooler right. than us. They just are. They are. You don't think so? Scott, you don't run into some kids and you're like, I think that kid's ridiculous, but you can see the coolness that absorbs off it. But – the perfect examples when I ran I, into I, might, I, I might just be too uh, self-absorbed to, to maybe. See that. <laughs> maybe. Thing. What, when I run into uh, what's her name that does the Batman uh, Batgirl covers? Uh, BK always likes to give me a hard time for uh, what's her name? Susan you know, Maika. Susan Maika. When I ran to her, I, you know, not exactly. I I look at her. I said shit. But you talk to her for two seconds. You see her, and you're like, oh, that's a hundred thousand percent not my style. But she right now is cool. And this is before she started hitting books that did pretty well. And you could tell because she had that coolness factor. It's not something you're going to like. It's not something you can. It's just something that's there when you have it. And it's short lived. And it's probably going to be short lived for her just like everybody else. It's I mean, everybody goes through that stage at one point. Like you are cool at one point. I'm not saying that people don't like you when you get older. I'm not saying that you can't be <laughs> successful when you get older. All right, Marco, just keep digging. I, hey, I'm okay with it. I, look, I'm okay with it. I'm just saying, I'm just saying, like, that's how it goes. So we're just not cool anymore. And that's fine. I'll be hey, a well, you know, answer, uh, Yeah, BK's know, question. Who is your favorite? Who is your favorite artist to work with? <laughs> it, uh, it wouldn't have been Marco. I'll tell you that. <laughs> I would say that, uh, you know, there are, uh, my stock answer is usually Joe Mad, and but I would say that like you know, I mean I, I I got to work with like the best comic book artists ever. You know Chris Pacella, John Reed Jr., Jim Lee, Wills Portacio, um, Carlos Pacheco. Um, Time out! You just said it, jo Ramada Jr. He he's he said Junior Jr. at one point. He's doing one of my things here. Where Ramada. at one point cool. Uh, you just call him Ramada? Oh my god! Uh, I'm just saying. It's uh, you know, I mean, it's like he had a point Romita. of coolness. What's that? Yeah, when he was really cool, people would, would call him Romita, but now Romita, that yeah, pronounce his name cool, properly. They I, call get him I get Ramado. it. I get it. You I say it. Ramita, I say Ramada. <laughs> tomato, tomato. I get it. Ramita, hey. Ramada. When was, hey, when you're cool, you can. When you're cool, you can do that stuff. You could, you know, you could not draw feet too. Like all types of people were cool at one point. Doesn't mean they still hold that <laughs> coolness anymore. Well, hey, sorry. Go ahead. Is there anything know. that you're working on now that's that's coming up or? Anything? Well, I thought I had something cool, but apparently <laughs> not. <laughs> no. Um, so what do you got coming up? I, uh, I. I'm going to say, what's today's date? What's today? The third? The third. December 3rd. And how often do you guys do this? Once, Once a week. week. Every week. Once a week. Okay. I believe that before Christmas, I'm going to have a huge announcement about a movie that I'm writing that I haven't brought to the studio yet. This is how confident I am in this idea. And I'm not going to uh, tell you what it is, but I will tell you that if I if it works, then I'll come back on and I'll talk about it here. So oh, nice. Perfect. Perfect. Clip it. Clip it. Clip that. So, but will that be your uh, – the only question I have, is that going to be the height of coolness or you – but you – I mean, you did Age of Apocalypse. So I, only one, uh, I only have one – I only have one. That was the height. One, no, I don't want to agree with that. I would say that um, – I mean, writing a movie like Happy Death Day, where it was like it won its box office. Yeah, that's sweet. Weekend. You know, I will tell you one thing, Mr. Marco. Um, <laughs> I was, uh, I know that, you know, there's an idea about like relevancy and blah, blah, blah. But I was, uh, I heard that they were doing a show gifted on Fox. Mm -hmm. And I thought, oh, a TV version of, the X-Men, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. you can't call it the X-Men, but yeah, it will be interesting. Yeah, off, yes. So I was like, I'm just going to see like tonally what it looks like. So I turned on the TV and it, 
and this is long this is years ago when there's actually a tv but um so i turn on the tv and this girl's running and she's being chased and the cops and they chase her into an underpass and they all pull out her gun and they all like are aiming there and she blinks yeah. and she's gone mm -hmm. and i'm like son of a bitch like the opening cold open is blink so she blinks and i'm like oh that's really cool a character i created 20 mm -hmm. years ago yeah. and there she is right in front of me screen fades to black the screen comes up and it's the first time i see the happy death day trailer on tv oh how cool is that and i'm like you know what marco wherever you are someday we're going to meet yeah <laughs> and i'll say i'm there, in the streets all the time so it's good i'm going to so say go there's few things cooler than watching a show that features a character that you created 20 years ago and then on that same show you see a feature film your feature film debut on the same show that's amazing. That, that is amazing. That's a super that is amazing. awesome feeling. So I would fun. just tell, I would just give you a teeny bit of advice: is to, even if you feel your coolest days are behind you, yeah, yeah. I would say. Oh, that doesn't mean I'm not popular because I'm no, extremely no, 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 popular. No, 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 have nothing to do with yeah, popularity. Yeah. All yeah. I'm saying is, is that maybe leave the door open, maybe always keep the door open to the possibility of being cool or maybe the next thing that's going to happen to you is sure. going to be way cooler than anything that's ever happened to you before. But wasn't that just a homage to your coolest point of when you created Blink? What do you mean? Well, I mean, that was a homage to your coolest point when you created Blink. Like, somebody homaged that and put it in a show. Um, maybe, but I wouldn't say that. I wouldn't say Blink was my... Uh, High point, but I well, no, I, I mean, it was around it. It was a, all that stuff over there was really cool. You did a lot of cool, I mean, it was really cool. You were doing lots of cool, shit, man. Uh huh. No, and then, and then I just faded away. No, I didn't, I didn't say anything about fading away. I didn't say anything about fading away. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, yeah, I mean, then you got, then you got, then you got to be very extremely popular. You and you're got... wearing, you're wearing headphones too, idiot. Wait, what's it say, Scott? If you happen to assault Mark on your encounter, I will contribute to your defense. For hey, there's right. some of our, no, some of our fans no try to, they started to go fund me to try to have people assault me. Oh, oh no, there will be no, no, uh. Mm -hmm. I, 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 oh, like I, to hear, I like to hear other people's uh, points of view. So. Oh, no, no, no. Yeah, I think. Uh, no, that's I mean, that's got to be amazing when that when that portion happened to you. I agree. I just think, you know, when when this when this movie announce it, when this um, that movie, when I make this movie announcement, uh -huh. you're going to be like, that is really cool. Yeah. And then you'll be like, how'd you do it? You're cool again? What? Nah. <laughs> you must have just blinked your eyes. You must have just blinked your eyes and it happened, I guess. I don't know. Can, can we can we ask if it's an original idea or an IP? Uh it is an IP, but it's an IP that nobody in the world would uh expect it would be an IP. Hmm. Like like some like at one point somebody came to me, a company after Happy Death Day, and they said, uh we want you to do magic eight ball. I'm like, okay. <laughs> like, how, how soon? Is, how, how long until we get to uh, Scrabble? You know, um, that would be good too. But like doorknob, you know, like, hey, everybody has a doorknob. You can't get into your house or you can't get out of your house without a doorknob. You know, and you're like, yeah. okay, we'll write a movie called Doorknob. But yeah, right. uh, I, I knew, I knew a few girls in high school that were doorknobs. Everyone got a turn. <laughs> <laughs> they tell um, old jokes. <laughs> I'll tell you though. At one point, I was uh, I went to the toy store to buy it, and then I had this idea for this other movie, and it's about a, a police sketch artist who is uh, you know just does like victim you know uh, suspects and blah blah blah, mm -hmm. and one night he's in bed and he he wakes up and he like starts sketching and he sketches a gun and a dumpster and he brings it into work and they're like wait a minute 
that and they go and they track it down and there's the weapon for the murder of the person that they were looking for he's like oh my god so then he uh these things start to happen where he's like getting clues from interviewing people not not clues that they've given but then he gets compelled to draw something and sketch it out and then finally he uh is in a, a hotel a hotel restaurant and he overhears a conversation. He doesn't think anything of it. And then he wakes up and he starts sketching. And what he discovers is he's uncovered this huge conspiracy where the CIA is operating on American soil in uh, whatever. And they know that the only guy who knows this is him because he sketched it out. And so it's, it's this race to try <laughs> to kill him. And the way that he tries to escape is he's like, you know, I'm in this building. How do we get out? And he sketches and, oh, my God, now I know I have to get to the third floor and there's a fire escape, blah, blah, blah. Sounds okay, right, for a movie? Interesting. Sorry. I like it. Yeah. I like it. Um, the reason that I had, the reason I came up with the idea was because when I was searching for the Magic 8-Ball, I saw Keychain. It was a Keychain <laughs> version of Etch-A-Sketch. And I'm like, someday they're going to do an Etch-A-Sketch movie. <laughs> <laughs> and so then I went and uh, jotted that down. So, um, so is it, is it going to be a horror movie? Is it going to be a romantic comedy? Is it's it going to be a, a hundred million dollar action adventure movie. Yes. Four quadrants, as we say. So, mm. but yeah, no, it, it's going to be huge. The, and the good thing is, is that, you know, uh, yeah, yeah, it's. Uh, what? I'm sorry, what did you say now? You said um, the interesting thing is what? Well, uh, Ball and Chain with uh, uh, Emily Blunt and The Rock uh, allowed me to go from writing Happy Death Day and I mean, like, like Chris, uh, my the director in Happy Death Day, followed it up with uh, Freaky, which is mm -hmm. you know Freaky Friday as a horror movie, and I've resisted the idea of doing another high concept horror movie even though it would be what people would happily make oh, yeah. yep and so because i want to concentrate on making those hundred million dollar movies and <laughs> having a netflix purchase uh ball and chain with emily and rock have opened that door for me to, oh, be nice. able to go into this meeting and say this is the craziest idea you're going to hear this year about a property that you own that no one in the world and nobody else will have pitched you this. And then I'm going to pitch it to him. And then I'm going to be like, and I'm going to go in with a director. So the director will, uh, that'll make a big difference because then the studio will already be predisposed to not having to go, okay, we like it, but how are we going to find a director and say, well, here's the director. You've already He's, got it. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, so we just got to find what Netflix properties are action adventure and uh, nobody's ever done before. And Marco, I, Marco, I adore you, but you are <laughs> a very, you're very limited in your thinking sometimes. Yeah, I am. <laughs> so did I we tell you? Too, I just to it has, yeah, no, it has nothing to do with Netflix. I was just talking about like Paul and Chain at Netflix uh, gives uh, nothing. To, okay, so somebody else, nothing to do with Netflix. Okay, all right. Yeah. Write it down. No. See, I actually was letting you give us the answer, so we're one step closer than we were. Let's yeah. play the next one. <laughs> uh, but, um, and next time I uh, next time I come in, I want to uh, devote an hour just to uh, coolness. Thanks for taking time with us. Great to hear from a legend. Aw, and happy you are still banging out amazing material. Thank you, Joes. Joe's Doolin. What is Joe's yeah. Doolin pictures today? What do you got, Joe, for us? What do you got? Let's see what your little emoji is. Uh, yeah, I can't see him. Oh, oh the, from the camp. It's the alien that's in the camp that's got the wetsuit on. On uh, what the what the heck was the camp with all the kids at camp, and the alien gets dropped off at the camp. Mac Mom and me. Drops... No, 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 no. It was a funny. <laughs> it was a funny one. It was uh, a <laughs> some summer camp or something. Not... Meatballs. Mac and me was not funny. That show was ridiculous. Meatballs. Hey, hey Joe. Joe. Meatballs too. Um, if, you wanna, if you want to sit in Marco's chair next, uh, <laughs> <laughs> next time, no one's going to. I will. Hey, I won't care either. No, nope, where did Matt go? Done. Poor Matt. Where did Matt he go? He had to go pick up his yeah. daughter. Yeah. Oh, okay. Matt. Too. Miss yeah. you. 
But so I can't um, wait for next time so we get to hear this announcement because now I'm super excited. Okay, yeah. In fact, you know what I'll do is I will even uh, promise that it. if it gets rejected, <clears throat> which is possible, I guess. I don't think so. I'll, I'll even come in and uh, should I come in and talk about? I don't know if that would be rude to the company. I yes, have to think about it. But, yeah. well, well, you'd still be marketing to other people, yeah, right? Listen, I mean, you're not going to did you just say one person, right? No, no. This particular thing, uh, as a clue. Clue, can o- we're writing it down. Can only go to one. That, this is the one, one stop shop. Yeah, yeah. So. Okay. They're a property. Like, like I wanted to do okay. McGill. I wanted to do a live action McGill Gorilla at one point, and McGill Gorilla is owned by Hanna Barbera. Yeah, yeah. and Hanna Barbera yeah. is owned by Warner Brothers. Uh-huh. So if I was going to pitch, Danny DeVito is Mr. Peebles. Oh, uh, perfect! Right, would it be great? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, and Dave Batista as uh, <laughs> Dave Batista, <laughs> <No. laughs> but, but no, so so there are things where, like, and sometimes I'll say to my agent, like, I want to go in and pitch this, and they'll be like, But you under you understand, like, that is the only place that you can pitch it to. I go, Absolutely, but you know, yeah, it's I mean, worth, it's worth a shot, right? right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. And you know, one, one thing that I want to do right now, it's I funny to say that great. was cool, but I'm not gonna say cool anymore now because well, just... for years I wanted to do um. I had this property that I wanted to do that, that I wanted to separate from the uh, existing property. And the idea was that this <coughs> girl would come home from college and her whole family was gone. And she's like, what is that? And she tracked it down. And the government says, listen, your family is severely fucked up. You know, like one is like a vampire, one is blah, 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 blah. And so we've taken them, we're experimenting on them and, you know, we're disavowing it and you never find them. And so Wednesday, Adams has to track down her missing family. And for years I would pitch it and there we go. There's no way they're going to let you separate Wednesday Adams from the rest of the (laughs) Adams family. And so this version, I love it. And Jenna uh, Ortega is amazing. And I, I think it's a great show, but that's what happens sometimes. And one of the things I'm trying to do now is I really want to do uh, the story of 99. Do you remember 99? Get mm-hmm. smart. Get smart. Get smart. Yeah. 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 Like, how was she inducted? How did she become, like, how did she go from, like, Agent 17 to, like, this prime Agent 99? Like, what was her career trajectory? And to me, at the end of it, well, not at the end of it, maybe at the end of the third season, mm-hmm. She gets to meet Agent eighty six, you know, which was mm. Max. You know, yeah. like That's why right. not? Like, like I want to tell that story about her and not make it like a goofy. In fact, I think it'd be cool that first she is enlisted, and she thinks she's in control, but she's actually been enlisted into chaos, and she didn't even realize it. You know, and mm. so. That's what I and, and I've talked to people that are going, well, you know, they probably won't let you have her. I go, you know, that's what they said about Wednesday Adams for yeah. 15 years. So let's ask and see if we can get it. So, yeah, yeah. What's worse to say? No, yeah, that's the worst that can happen. So. Say no, okay. super cool thing that we're going to talk about in two weeks. Sweet, like, so we got to cut that last piece. We got to cut that last piece out. Is that what you're asking us to cut? Is the Jane part out? Uh, you know, I mean, I guess it's possible that someone could be like. That's a great idea. I'm going to write a script in three days and beat him to it. You know, because well, I mean? I'll call our editor to do it tonight, but I'm not planning on doing that. Just to let you know. Yeah, we can. We can. We we'll do it for you. We'll take it out if you want us to. Though we will. Yeah, I'll call him right yeah, now. We'll we'll take it out for you. Yeah, I guess. I, you know, I guess. I guess the deal would be we'll clip it so that we know you'll come back. Yeah. Oh, we're going to clip <laughs> it and save it. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Clip it. Well, oh, you know it. what? How about this? Oh, we'll, I'll make this deal because I do believe I'm going to. Get Jane set up. I think you are too. Okay. So what we can do, how, how does this sound? 100% fair to everyone. Now we got it, like three more people join, four more people just join. But okay, go ahead. Okay, so, you, so you clip it. Yeah. Then we'll run that clip when I announce, so I'll announce it and I'll say, this was behind the scenes. Absolutely. This is what happens when you go in and pitch and blah, blah, blah. Yeah, Let me cool. through a pitch meeting. So. Oh, dude, that'd be awesome. Take us through a pitch. I think like having it from somebody who does it, because I don't think people know how the sausage is made a lot of times. Like the internet's really good at telling people how sausage is made, and that's not how you make sausage. Like that is that's not how you make sausage. That's a water balloon, bro. So I'm just saying. 
that's it. So it'd be good to well, see. You know, the other thing, though, too, is people make sausage differently. Like, I, uh, <laughs> I think Scott Snyder is very, very good at what he does, huh. um, and he teaches these kids. And I'm sure that everybody gets a lot out of attending his classes. I do not doubt that at sure. any, any way. But I also know that the heat way that he writes comic books are completely different from the way that I write comic books. And I write comic books yeah. completely different than the way right. Jack Johns writes comic books. So yeah. right, but I, I think there's like but there's 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 the basics that there's uh there's paper, right, eventually, uh, and there's pen and uh or ink of some yeah. sort. Like it's it's all reminiscent at least of itself. Yeah, there's all different types of you know, there's all different types of sausage, you know, you get uh, your Wiener. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, you know, if you look at Scott's work, Scott is always, you know, like at the core, like what is the metaphor? Like, what are we saying about the that's not, you know. AI is making sausage these days. I mean, writing books and storylines now. Say it again. I'm sorry. AI. Oh, oh yeah. Jesus. It's now writing and generating written content. I know that I know they've done art. I haven't seen any. Or they do like fan fiction and stuff like that. Or no? It's it's um, it helps. It's basically like it'll create a speech for an essay for class if you needed it to. You would give it what the information is needed, and it will generate text based on that. Yeah, but I, I'm I'm kind of saying the process. We're seeing what the process is, so we'll see what the process of pitches, not what his style of pitches. See, I thought a lot of his. I thought a lot of uh, Marco's questions tonight were AI generated they are i have an ipad down here and all i do is it listens to you and then I, it spits back out what i'm supposed to repeat to you so that's what's been going on you typed You're very smart you typed huh? in the word cool and that's what came up no. <laughs> coolest it wasn't cool it was coolest well, we will clip that for you scott we appreciate you hanging out with us well, we can't wait to see you in two weeks so that we we get to find yeah, out no, what's, yeah, about. Uh, what's today saturday right yeah yeah mm -hmm. Yeah, I can't. I mean, you know, I, I could be surprised again, but I don't think so. I, yeah, I think you got it. And then, you know, what? if I tell you and you're like, what the fuck were you thinking? Why did you think that? Why did you think anyone was going to watch that no, movie? I think there's always going to be something that's like this. I want to see that movie. You turn into uh, Seinfeld. <laughs> Why would you watch a movie like that? <laughs> Sorry. I mean, so yeah, far, I, I just don't know who's I've never watched Seinfeld. So. I love Most it. What you've pitched and said tonight sounds awesome. Yeah. Oh, the yeah, one I, that was... ideas and stuff that you've just said, like it's like, like that. Yeah. I I wish I had that creativeness just to be able. I like this. Ooh, you've got this cool we do too. Cool. Um, you know what? Next time we'll play. Uh, actually, let's do it right now, right quickly. Um, Kyle, think of a movie in your head and keep it in your head for a second. Okay. And sticks. Think of a movie. In your head. You got it? Yep. Okay, what's your movie? Back to the Future. That's what I was going to say. Future? Yeah. You said Back to the Future. Uh, Tropic Thunder. You had Back to the Future too. Yeah. Did you just do a panel together? Or? No. No. <laughs> okay, well, when I come on next, I used to uh, teach at this Harvard uh, alumni thing, and I'm not in Harvard. I'm not dropping names. It's just this thing that I would teach at every year. And what I would do is I would make two people choose the movie. And then from those two movies, I would create, I'd pitch them back a new movie based on, like at one point I got Goodfellas. You make a, and, you make a mash. Yeah. I got Goodfellas and I got uh, Looking for Mr. Goodbar. <laughs> you know. That's and two like, different ends of the spectrum. So it's this <laughs> good, ma got mobster mall who... Always has a thing for a bad boy. She's always going. She always and so finally she meets this guy, this mob guy, and <laughs> she falls in love with him. And he's got a future, and he's in, and then it turns out that he's a fed. So <laughs> it's like you know she finally meets this perfect bad boy, and it turns out he's a federal agent. So it's like you know, and then it goes farther. But but the idea is to what I would always do is I would take two movie dogs, but you guys had to fuck it up by picking the same. <laughs> <laughs> But the next time we'll we'll play and we'll do it. So yeah, okay, so that sounds good. <laughs> we'll yeah. work on it next we'll time. Work. So next time you know what's happening. So if you have the same movie, just Kyle change the change the movie. I will. Like, he wasn't a psychic. He either goes, "Hey, listen, I'm a psychic, or I'm going to do a magic trick." He's I like, should hey, have been smarter. Movies. I told you I wasn't creative. I should I have done a magic trick. <laughs> no, I, 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 I wonder why, why it's in the air. Did you just it. do a panel recently on it, or? Uh, 
podcast or no. that's a movie i watch a lot head. of so yeah how, you, how does it compare to the third one do you like the third which one do you like better i like them all as a whole but i like the first one the best yeah i, yeah, yeah. I get yeah, it the second best. <clears throat> like i like die hard the best and i thought die hard 2 sucked balls and then Die Hard 3 came out, and I was like, hey, Die Hard 2 wasn't that bad, really. You know? <laughs> and I, I, and 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 I, like, I like 4, really. Die Hard 4? The one with Samuel L. Jackson? Samuel, just the Samuel L. Jackson. That was, that was 3. But was that 3? That was 3. Okay. 4 was the, wasn't 4 the Dude. girlfriend one? Why do you keep calling me Seuss? Yeah, yeah, Seuss. Hey, Seuss. Yeah, why do you call me Seuss? your name? Hey, Seuss. Yeah, hey, Seuss. Hey, Five. Hey, Seuss. What? I was the one who was the son. Uh, I, um, four? What the fuck? Where's on the, where the Kevin plane? Smith the one? one. Always, I don't know. Sunny did a, a re, uh, well, one was the third, and then one was the son. So, yeah, I think it was the fifth one. But, but either way, they did a, a you know. Die Hard movie with Danny DeVito. That would be fun. <laughs> I'll tell you. Okay, last. Uh, it wasn't anything to do with those guys. Where was, was in DC? Okay. Fan made. That was with his daughter, right? Yeah. Is, we're, we're in December. Is it a Christmas movie? Um, absolutely. And I'll just tell you one thing. This is a movie that I pitched and my agent was like, that's a great idea, but I have too many uh, ideas to pitch. What I really want to pitch is I want to pitch a movie about a terrorist who gathers these gunmen and they have this plan to break into a building and steal $60 million in bear bonds. Mm -hmm. Everything works perfectly. And suddenly he gets a phone call and it's like, fuck, there's a New York City cop somewhere in this building. And so the idea is you, you die hard from the point of view of Hans. You know, like what was that? How frustrating was that? That this, you know, cop like, we never see that. So I thought, oh, that'd be fun to see from that angle. That would be cool. Yeah. You don't see Bruce Willis as much, you see Hans a lot more. Yeah, it's just like, what is this guy? And you know, but anyway, all right. You kept us to the ten o'clock hour, so I think we're going to take off too. Um, oh, you guys no, go. I'll show it to you. Longer. You're doing. You guys are going. Are you guys? Yeah, he's on the whole show. Are you guys, Kyle? Are you guys going on longer? Because I'm not going on longer. I'm going to talk to um, uh, AKA and uh, who are the other guys? The podcast. Uh, the uh, guys that were writing message board guys. Oh, um, BK and uh, oh, BK, yeah, yeah. You guys go, BK and uh, I and uh, Joe, yeah. Joe, you, Joe, and BK can take yeah. it over and have a good time. And <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, you're always welcome if you just want to BS and come on. You can yeah. more than welcome. Just we'll shoot you a link and you can just come on. Hey, cool. We have shows every day of the week. We got three live oh, really? shows. Yeah, we do us. I do. I actually do a Saturday Star Wars show. We do a Wednesday like just general pop Sunday. show. Talk about whatever no that's sunday, sunday? Yes, that uh -huh. then wednesday we do like a comic show pop culture show and then we do saturday which is a little more lively s and s here dare i ask yeah. hmm? dare i ask please do what's your coolest show any show i'm on <laughs> <laughs> well he does have one his his wednesday show is called the totally awesome cool yeah, it's called the totally awesome coolest show ever <laughs> okay yeah 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 yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah it's me so there, there's a guy named renna pete renna he's He's, this is his channel, uh -huh. and then we just kind of have a collective that we. It's his we, channel, but he doesn't even care. But I'm with you, Scott. Thank you. He does care. You, Lord, that's why he sent me. Um, <laughs> that's why he sent you. What, what does he do? Oh, he's, he's not doing something. So I mean, well, because he does. So he's doing the tape show. So we do tape shows and we do live shows. We have three live shows, and then we have other tape content that we do. So we have a show on every single day. And this so, like, when I was like, hey, he wants to cut that out, I just text, he's in oh a show. God, right now. That word. That's him just texting me back saying, what do you need? And it's like, we have to go text, we have to cut out between these numbers. Yeah. So, yeah, the swearing doesn't matter on this show. Yeah, swearing doesn't matter. Oh, oh, this is the best show. So, Tyson <laughs> saying anything else I do after this will be. Tyson wants to stay with you too. See what they're doing now? Now they're speaking up because they want to stay with you afterwards for some, <laughs> for some chat time and everything like that. So, no, yeah, so shoot me a thing. And if I, uh, yeah. If I'm cool. free, I'll come on. So yeah, awesome. All right, good. All right, a pleasure, guys. Thanks, guys. It was great. Yep. Man. Thanks really a lot. Thanks. Right. Thank you. Have a great rest of your night. And nice weekend. Where's, where's the off button? Yeah, I got. Yeah. You. Okay. It's uh, up. Just yet. Yeah. There you go.
<laughs> you went in the back room, but still in the corner. There you go. Excellent. We got a whole show to do. We, we built a whole show because we didn't know. We just figured Scott was going to hang out with us for like 20 minutes. So we still have a full show to do. We don't well, have I've almost to. been up for 24 fucking hours. So what? <laughs> like, another show. hour. Dude, there's no fucking way. I, Star Wars isn't even fucking close to being done yet. I, we still have to edit this. Oh, you're going to edit out five minutes. The show has to render anyway. Move the shit on. Let's go. Okay. Let's get the ball rolling. All What's I next? know is Marco will never be as cool as Scott seeing <laughs> Blink at a movie at the same time on true TV. facts. That's true. No, nah, so, that's actually not true, but almost facts. Almost facts. Almost facts. I, I, almost I'm, facts. I, I'm dude, he was sure. good, man. Hey, he's funny as shit, dude. I'll give it to you. The guy's good. The guy's fucking good. Yeah, um, he was awesome. So, well, you know, he did say he was a stand-up comedian, so <laughs> yeah. that's crazy. For six years. Yeah, for six years. And then doing comics at the same time, I think. Yeah. I'm not 100% sure on that one, but... Let's see. What do we got next for the news, though? Let's get right back into the news. That Shit, was, we still have news? No, come on, guys. Well, we we finish, well I'm going to skip because we were going to review Wednesday. We were going to review I Chainsaw Man. Yet. We were going <coughs> to review. So I'll, we'll take those out. Please. Yeah, Sam's not here Just for Chainsaw effort. Man. So. And whatever. so I'll take those out. So we'll do worst cover of the week. We'll do first yep. appearances. <coughs> I'll do my hot chick of the week. And then, and then uh, Hartman can do his what the fuck story. And then we're out. <laughs> this isn't my show. This is his show. I, dude, I, <laughs> it can be Marco's show. It's like, let's go. I don't think Marco was actually invited. To what? Yeah. I'm the, oh, to that show? To the Scott show? No, the Scott show, BK show. I'm not. Scott, apparently, Scott, Joe, BK, and Tyson are having their own show. I'm not invited to that show. <laughs> Shoot me a link. Shoot me a link. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So we'll, we'll get the rest of the show going. So here we go. Yeah, I didn't expect them to be like, hey, we're just going to hang out. And I expected him for like 20 minutes, and he was awesome, though. So worst covers, we got our worst covers, best covers of the week. Our first worst cover is this Blue Beetle cover. Okay. It's just not good. What do you think, Marco? Uh, my thing was, what the fuck is this? So Shit is whack. I can't remember who 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 drew it now. But. What the fuck is it? It's just it's whack. Not. All right, go no, ahead. Go. Next worst cover of the week is. Do you everybody knows who this is? Oh come on, Momoko cover. Awful. Momoko. This isn't that. Hey, this isn't going to win because that's not that's not half as bad as that last cover. Yeah. This is better than a few of her covers. This is just like a taste thing. If you like her style. Yeah, you know, I mean, some people put fucking pineapple on pizzas. Look, look right here. psychos. Some Here's people like Marocco. I mean, that's what it is. You know what I mean? Yeah. That doesn't they're mean aliens. pizza, man. They're aliens. It's water color. Going to Comic Con. It does. Yeah. That's what this is. <laughs> yeah. That's what this is. Yeah. Shit ain't easy. Yeah. And just because Ish isn't here, I did uh, 007 <laughs> worst cover of the week because he loves 007. Yeah. But this is kind of a terrible cover. It's vectorized. It it looks like uh, 007 doing that Spider-Man point thing. It looks like <laughs> Archer. It does look like Archer. Yeah. Very good yeah. call, Harmon. I can see Archer, Archer in that too. So, so best covers of the week, we've got the Darth you like Vader this, cover. Huh? With the, with the uh, bridesmaids the, in the background? Yeah, Fates? both of the yeah. covers were cool, but I, we thought this one was actually better. Okay. You don't like it? No, it's cool. It's cool. You know what the problem with Vader covers nowadays is? Is uh, you have to do a Vader cover like this, right? Because if not, it looks like shit. So, like, the standard's been set for Vader covers where, like, you can't, it has to be this. Mm -hmm. You know, it, it has to be. You can't helmet. just do headshots anymore. Yeah, you got to do a little bit of the background with the red, and the red's got to feed something else into it. Or he's got to be doing something on the cover. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, it's getting to but that. But the point. other cover, what he's got a lightsaber and. Yeah. You know, 
So, and slice it in dice and whatever. Right. Yeah, but it's good. Then we have the best. It looks like they had Taco Bell's ready to exit their butthole cover. Oh, it does look. He's this, got the shits. This is what I look like. Has made this face bug. after oh, eating Taco Bell. Dude, I had a stomach bug, and this is exactly what I look like every five minutes. Every five minutes this past week. Well, flying ain't like. helping. Huh? I said flying ain't helping. Is that what oh, that's why birds <laughs> shit all the time, right? And this is why yeah. your car is full of penguin shit or whatever. Well, yes, shit. It's Taco Bell. <laughs> birds are ready to go, exit. Right? And I, we just like you said, Mark, we've all made this face. I heard. Can I tell this one joke? <laughs> I did hear about a, a pigeon. I don't know who said it, but I was I was watching something late, and they said, "Oh, it must." There's a guy named uh, the guy that used to be on MTV. The Theo is his name. Theo. Theo, yeah. Theo he Bond. said him and a bunch of his buddies like messed up a rent a car, and they got pigeons from the ground, and they squeezed the pigeons to shit all over the spot that they dented, <laughs> and then took it in, and it just looked like Jesus just looked like pigeon shit all over the car. So they got away with it. And that actually <laughs> got in hell. <laughs> that, this is right. This is one of the pigeons he grabbed. There you go. Just looked like he ate some Taco Bell. All right, what do we got next? Next, we've got the Albuquerque cover of Blue Beetle, which is a lot I actually of like this. This one's yeah. nice. This is fucking slick, uh, dude. Albuquerque can make some bad ass. He's a he's a bad ass. Hardy? Looks, looks like he just took a shit, and those are the smell waves coming from behind him. I don't oh, like that. <laughs> this is after the Taco Bell exit. <laughs> yeah, but no, hey, Rob, got terrible Rob, taste. Raphael Albuquerque good. killed it. Yeah, this is good. This is good, man. Yeah. This is really. Yeah. Good. What did he say? It's something on the internet you don't like, Hart? Hmm? No, it? I just say I don't like it. I mean, it's, what I, it's art. Yeah. Uh, uh, perceptive I can't art. even remember what cover this is now. I had it in my head. I'm going to have to look it up real quick. Please do. It looks like an oh, airplane damn it. ad. <laughs> it's Die All Hard right. 4. This is Die Hard 4? No. This is Die Hard 6. No. Is this Die Hard Six? Where they they have to land the plane and that's Die Hard Two. <laughs> oh, the only thing I remember for that one Die Hard is the snow. Remember he lit the the the, the gas or whatever was in the snow and he lit the snow on yeah, fire. Yeah, that's two. That's two. Is that two? Okay. That's oh, two. to land the plane. That's right. To land. Oh shit, you're right. To land the plane. I was just joking around, but yeah, yeah. To land the plane, he did. Yeah. Yeah. This is Planet Zombie. BK, thank you. That is a Thank cover you. planet plane zombie. Thank a you. cover plane. Is there any zombies hey. there? Is that a zombie? What That's, cover am I looking at? Yeah, he's it like it's definitely a dead no head. There. some shit coming out of his mouth. I don't fucking know. I like thought this was a Japanese porn mouth. shit. I don't this know. Is what the best cover? Stick on a plane, too. get him flipped or something. Oh, what? AI. This AI is. <laughs> No way. Saying it. I'm calling it. That's that last one was called the approach number two. <laughs> the approach. That was what that was. That was the approach issue two. And then I have to get through. God, did you I write any of these? Down cover, I'm looking up information on this one. What is this cover? This is called the boogeyman number three. This is a, a blaze from a blaze, but this is the boogie. This is the, the jet, uh, one and ten virgin cover. I just think that looks sick, man, with the rain and this, the wolf in the back. It just it's yeah. nice. It's got I, that cloudy I just look the shit out of it. Oh, we don't have anime news. So we'll go to first appearances. I can't do anything. Everything's. I hear my mic echoing. So this week we have Planet Hulk number one, the first appearance of Talia, a young woman with green skin searching for the legendary green scar. First appearance of Balo, the brother of Talia, and multiple other Hulk like characters introduced. <laughs> Joseph, significant lack of boobs in your cover picks. <laughs> Next we have oh Marco could talk about what he left. Next we can talk uh, Star Wars High Republic number one adventures. Damn it, where's Marco at when you need him? First appearance of Therm Scissor Punch. First appearance of Quiet Shan. 
first appearance of Coromont Vizzle, first appearance of Alak, and first appearance of Inspector Raft. That's actually a cool cover. I actually like that. Yeah, it's not bad. No, it's not bad at all. It's bright. Right. Yeah. yeah. And I'm sure uh, Marco will be talking. He, he must. His Taco Bell must be exiting him. <laughs> well, he was eating at a con. Well, I don't know if he eats at the con. He said he doesn't. Yeah. With that crappy blue beetle cover, we had the first appearance of Fade Away, a cloaked villain with the ability of teleport, and the first cameo appearance of Yellow Beetle. Mm. So everybody pick up the Albuquerque oh. cover because that's the good one. They're, they're not going to do that uh, different colored beetles now, are they? Like they did for Green Lantern. Oh, there'll be a red beetle, and there'll be a green beetle. And... But they should have them walking across the beetle. road, though, if they do. Have more walking across the road. They gotta have they gotta have them walking across Abbey Road if they do do that. <laughs> Poe drizzle. So, um, if you you guys are probably gonna talk about this tomorrow, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So next we have Justice Society of America number one. We've got the first appearance and death of Ruby Sokov. Daughter of Red Lantern and the first appearance death of Harley Quinn's son. Oh, okay. Damn. <laughs> appearance and death in the same issue. Two people. Fuck. That's fucked. I'm Next excited. we have Wild Store number one. First appearance of City Boy. Ability to magically manipulate cities around him. <laughs> what the f what is what does that mean? He's the PR guy. <laughs> Guy, like, what does that mean, Matt? What the fuck does that mean? <laughs> is, is that the buildings, the cars, the people? Does he does he transform New York City into Detroit? Like, dude, what? did you see? Did you see that it's Wildstorm? First off, <laughs> yeah. Okay, yeah. You mean it, all you have to do is actually pick up the trash that's laying around New York, and you might get closer to being Detroit. Um, and then Dark Vader 29, we've got the first appearance of what is it? Joel Tom Barr. It's the he's the nephew of uh, or the son of uh, Greek of uh, Wato Tom Barr. Okay, yeah, <laughs> it's there's a Clone War character, and this is his off. Well, this is like a relative of his. Is this a character you're gonna see that's gonna really dominate? For not power? really move. I mean, no. Is it? It's just. It's the. So if you're following Star Wars character. lately, there's a yeah. If you're following Star Wars lately, there's a lot of first appearances of characters that are zero fucks given. Right. I mean, it's cool. Like the guy, the character is actually pretty good. But yeah, I mean, he definitely tells you who he is and who's he related to, and blah 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 blah. And it's like, oh, cool, you're related to a fourth tier character in Clone Wars. Good job. Congratulations. <laughs> I, I will say at least Star Wars is trying to give us new characters, whether they're um, irrelevant or not. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I mean you he's know. relevant. He's relevant to the storyline, but making him like it's not super not, relevant. Like, yeah, it's you not know, he's, not, he's not. He's not the a, next a long time Luke Skywalker. Yeah, you're not. Yeah, gonna... It's not gonna be like a Valance or Luke Skywalker. Not even like yeah, the uh, Star Stan. Not, eh, it's not gonna be a long time relevant. A hundred fifty dollar book one day because of this. Oh, uh, I don't think what not can pump books like that anymore, so oh. I don't think it will be. Gotcha, gotcha. So a lot of these ancillary characters are like you know be like a Lobot. You know they're they're there and they're oh this is the Lobot. No, no, no. This no, no, <laughs> Ugnot maybe. <laughs> yeah. The Ugnot's cousin, you know, one of the Ugnot's cousins. Yeah. I don't know. You know, that's, that's what it is. I mean, it's it, the book's written well, so the book the the book's written well, so the character's written well, but like the staying power of the character, no. Fuck. Yeah, that's right. what I was asking. Yeah. yeah, yeah. We didn't do a top five this week. You didn't. So yeah. cool. We're almost done. No, we're good, man. <laughs> I just snorted some more Red Bull up my nose, and now we're really ready to go. <laughs> ready to go. You need okay, to parachute so coffee. That's what you need to we're do. gonna move well, to the movie wars. Go ahead. Sorry. What yeah. was the movie wars this week? Huh? Okay. So since December, movie wars are going to be Christmas movies. Yes, is this going to be so this, this is going to be week, Die Hard, right? 
Oh my god. No, not yet. This week we have Elf versus Bad Santa. Ooh. Mm. Ew. I don't know if either one of these aged well. Elf kind of does. I think it's still bad Santa's good for funny. kids. They just played Elf for 24 straight hours this week at last weekend. Are you kidding me? Where? People Can't really do don't have shit to do. Well, it's um, like them playing uh, Christmas Story for 24 hours every year. Mm. You can only watch it once, maybe. Joe says, Bad Santa a Gremlins. Just fine. No, see, like, Gre yeah, Gremlins. Joe, Joe's got it. I thought I was going to get something good. Maybe that's what it is. I just thought I was going to get, like, Gremlins or Die Hard. Or... Die Hard. Yeah. Hey, there's a whole month. It's December 3rd, Marco. Why we got to have war yeah, for look. Christmas? I'm only here during lunch. We can't, we can't. lunch. Uh... We got to put bangers out at the beginning. I did that last time yeah. for Halloween and fucking Nightmare on Elm Street won for five straight weeks. Yeah. Winners got to win, bro. What do you want? <laughs> <laughs> so we got TK says Elf. Comic Chef says Elf. Joe says Bad Santa. I'm bad, taking bad that as Santa. a vote. He said H fi just fine. I'm not sure. Is she spry <laughs> when he asks about his grandma? Tyson says Bad Santa. I, it's a toss up, but I'm gonna have to go bad Santa. Just I would it's... say when these came out, when they first came out, I would have given it to bad Santa. I like, I enjoyed the first couple run throughs. I enjoyed bad Santa more than I enjoyed Elf. Hmm. Hmm. I don't know. I'm not a Billy Bob Thornton. You mean Man, Billy yeah. Bob Thornton, who's a creep ball playing a creep ball? It's perfect, dude. Like, well, no, I mean, that's called typecasting, right? Yeah, right. <laughs> so. But I guess Astro you know when it comes down to Christmas movies, I'll figure. It. The guy was the kid was cutting up. He was whittling up a, a pickle. So like. <laughs> <laughs> so. Yeah, exactly. What a sandwich. <laughs> yeah. So. I right, right now I would go with Elf. I I'd give Bad Santa another watch. Just I've been a while since I've watched it, but watch Bad Santa. Like Ooh. elf, elf is uh, you know. Elf is say? good though. It's it's. Jeans Con. I said Con should be playing rollerball or laying on a slab after being shot up in a toll booth. Godfather reference. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, hopefully this week uh, I'll put them up so you guys can vote. Yeah, we'll mm -hmm. get them up in the things. That was Tropic Was that last week's? It was two weeks ago. We did Tropic oh, okay. Thunder versus Saving Private Ryan. <laughs> All right. Now with Movie Wars this week, or Movie Wars, Cartoon Wars, we did Batman versus Spider Man, and I'm pretty sure Batman fucking destroyed it. But since it's December, we're going to do a Christmas, a Charlie Brown Christmas versus oh, Dr. Hmm. Seuss How the Grinch Stole Christmas. Wow. Huh. Is there a third option? Womp, 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 womp. <laughs> it was the third option. <laughs> Muppet so, Christmas Carol. I'm surprised you didn't go with Muppet Christmas Carol because it was the 30th anniversary today. Maybe next week. Oh, yeah. I, Matt picked these ones, so. Yeah, Matt. This is a hard... This is a toss-up. I like both of these. Man. I think I'm... Oh, I think I might go Charlie Brown Christmas. The Grinch kills people. And not in this oh. one, he doesn't. Oh. <laughs> That's the other movie. Oh, yeah. Astros, like Charlie Charlie wait, are, it, uh, hey, time out. This also contains Horton's Got a Who. So, like, is that a combo? Is that a little bonus in there? I'm trying to push it above the. Yeah, edge so the VHS, yeah, the, the, the release had Horton Hears a Who on it. Oh, right. So we're judging based on extras too. It's <laughs> <laughs> pretty advanced. I'm I don't own either. Charlie Brown, Joe, good good choice. Tyson, Grinch. Well, the commentary on PK, the other one had the full cast. Charlie Brown, TK, Charlie Brown. But these will be up. Hopefully, uh, Pete will put these up Monday or Tuesday. Yeah, we'll get them. And then my hot pick of the week goes to Elizabeth. Hot pick of the week. <laughs> you could say it's boobs. Hot chick of the week. I salute boobs. you. 
wearing that shirt, Elizabeth. What do you think, Marco? Who is this? Scarlet, Scarlet Witch. Witch. It's Scarlet Witch. Oh, yeah. Is it? Oh, and it's knows the face. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, her there. eyes are a little up, a little higher there. <laughs> my, your whole like, your whole show is based you. around this. <laughs> Brilliant. <laughs> <laughs> this is why you never had your coolest day. You do know that, right? <laughs> this is why you've never had your coolest day. <sighs> uh, and what's their name? Oh, you're right. The lip gloss doesn't go with that shirt. <laughs> it looks like she put mm. lip gloss on the shirt. It's a con know. it's a contrast, people. I didn't even know she was had anything on her lips. <laughs> on her tip. So, all right. Oh. And our final story <laughs> that we have for the night is actually going is a PSA announcement directed at Brian McClay. Oh, what are you guys doing? <laughs> the National uh -oh. Park Service of humans to stop licking toads. <laughs> Would you like yeah, to for, for all the guys out there and girls that you know they told you not to drink alcohol and you did it once and you felt good? They're telling you not to lick frogs, so I would try well, it once at least. It's a certain frog <laughs> here in Arizona. I would just be picking all the frogs up trying. It's a Sonoran, it's a Sonoran desert toad. And what they say with these Sonoran desert toads snoring is that their poison <laughs> that they release out as a defense. Is has DMT in it, and you guys all know what DMT is. And from the looks of this frog, he's not staying away from people. I don't know. Like he's <laughs> and saying, "Lick me." So what happens here is they hide until the we get our fucking trail cam. <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't know that. Yes, I fucking do. It's a trail cam shot. Motherfucker, this guy needs to lick me. <laughs> so what happens here in Arizona is. When it rains, they come out when it gets wet, and they pretty much stay underground 90% of the year because yeah. it doesn't fucking rain here. But during our monsoon <laughs> season, um, during our monsoon season, they come out. Here. So, what? like, it's pouring here now, so chances are they're, they probably come out, but they come out during our monsoon season in the summer. And what Brian what? does is he, you know, he drives out to the desert – and he collects them and he milks them <clears throat> so that he could get a DMT trip. But the National Park Service is now telling people, please don't stop and lick these toads. I, I have a quick Arizona question. He has a relationship with them, probably. He really hmm. does that? There's no way. Yeah. <laughs> He's done it ever since I've known him. It's used in Poor DMT fucking creation. frogs. It's used what? in DMT creation. Like, that, they... I don't know what that it's, is. It's the shit that changes Mike Tyson to a, a loving person. Yeah. Basically. Yeah. Yeah. It's DMT. It's, it's yeah, it says don't lick them. Doesn't say don't milk them. <laughs> well, you lick them or milk them. It's whatever you do. Yeah. You know. I mean, that guy so, right, that frog right there is all in. If you're asking me, like, he, yeah. What you got problem? If you're He's looking at a frog and saying it's all in and ready He's to go, saying, like you know you do sound so Dude, fucking I cringy, bro. Like, like two legs, like the fuck oh, you look at that. Those Dude, it's they, not a two legs, you dumbass. He no, <laughs> he, he's standing up. They did this on Family Guy. He's standing up. <laughs> they definitely need to medicate He's you, like, bro. yo, you, I'm holding, bro. <laughs> Wasn't there an episode of Family Guy? Like, for you this? know what? I want to waste my day sure licking a toad's ass. Like, what the? He's fuck like, you wrong? haven't licked this toad's ass. I'm not licking any toad's <laughs> ass, bro. I'm not licking toad ass. I'm well, not you don't doing lick the ass. I imagine you probably. No, no, no. They the have the glands on them that has poison in them. It's a their underbelly, isn't it? They just yeah. So you, you milk, you milk the teeth. <laughs> just the fuck. <laughs> If it wasn't supposed to be, we wouldn't have tongues through evolution, right? <laughs> oh my god! What hey, do you place their fucking own? What the fuck ever? But yeah, just like Joe says, <laughs> DMT is pretty much the strongest hallucinogenic. Yeah, mm. it's like in, it's like a ten second trip, but yeah, like, like they, Joe Rogan always lives. talks about it. Like it's 
you know, it, like it changes your life because it's like you see, like you, you know, the creator kind of thing, and they, you know, they they pass something along. It's basically uh, Doctor Strange that scene where she the touches creator, his forehead. It's good. The, it, now I understand people who think they've been raped by aliens because they're licking fucking toad asses. Yeah, if well, you no, lick toad asses, like no, stop. Not, you lick toad asses, of course you think you've been raped by gonna, aliens because be the fucking aliens. trip. They're like, I had this green thing came down. It was it was probing my ass. No, you were licking a toad ass, and you fucking tripped out so bad you thought it was probing you. I get it. Basically, it all fucking makes sense. No, no, it all makes sense now. It all makes sense now. Where she sends them through the universe, like that's what I've heard. DM tree tripping is like. But I know a lot of you guys watch MCM, and you guys have watched Brian and heard Brian talk about this over the years. This is something that he does every summer. Are you joking with me on this? Are you serious no. on this? hundred percent serious. He fucking goes out have... in the desert and catches fucking frogs so he can milk. Well, they're telling that people can't not to true. lick them, Marco. So apparently, people are licking these. Toes. Apparently, people are fucking licking. He yeah, none of this. To, do, to if, are, if you're hold yeah. on, you're asking me if I believe people in Arizona are licking fucking frogs. Yeah, no, hundred percent. I've met coming to Arizona. Tons of people in Arizona that are fucking more. People are I get finding that. these frogs from other states to do this. Well, like, they're, this they're isn't primarily like Arizona here. people only. I don't. I mean, I don't know what the amount of people doing it outside of the states are, but I know that that is something that people he do. Can tell the Arizona there. States animal. <laughs> Jesus, <laughs> dude! If you're asking me, do people do <laughs> yeah. st- ridiculous that's, things? Yes, I agree. Yes, what I'm saying is, like, that sounds ridiculous. Running around and trying to milk a toad. Does this it's not? A, the, you're the trying to act illegal. like this doesn't sound. Hartman, Hartman, you're trying to act like this doesn't sound ridiculous, right? No, That's I'm saying you're... DMT doesn't sound ridiculous. I wouldn't be licking toads, but I mean, if your people are doing it and getting high, then I mean, let them do what they got to do. Like, as long as they ain't licking my ass. <laughs> That's what that Toad's picture is. That Toad's Jewish. picture is him a, squatting down going, please don't lick my ass. He's just trying to hustle and make money for his kids. That's all that frog is trying to do. <sighs> Looking at one like, of those Toads. Yeah, you the police? I'm gonna... You the police? No, <laughs> oh, no. Jesus Christ. I got no. it. Uh, <laughs> Black and white motion sensor camera captured the Sonoran Desert Road staring <laughs> into the fucker's soul. It's an organ pipe captured natural monument in Arizona. So yeah, it's it's they're primarily here in Arizona. It's, but yeah. yes, and it's illegal in California p- to possess the poison. Tyson, I, look, I get, I get you, man. So if it's this illegal, just, it's got to be. Different. I think there's a lot of sun damage going on brains in Arizona, bro. <laughs> just like a <laughs> lot. Says like when you smoke, the toxins are a powerful psychedelic. Astro says he's taking his heart. He's down. He's up on See, I'm talking about people are people are all in on these toads. Man. Well, PSA, please stop licking toad ass. All right. This is a frog. Versus is. Just <laughs> this is a <laughs> Come on, man. No, it's, yeah. no, I don't think it's like that. Yeah. I don't think it's like that, dude. I'm telling you but exactly yeah, what it's like. What? Going to Doctor Strange's movie. We're not talking to you. We're talking about the co- Carmen. There's comments. No, we're, we're this says, this says the Sonoran Desert Toad secretes a potent toxin that can make people sick if they touch it or they get poisoned in the mouth they poison their mouth but despite the risk people have discovered the toxic s- secretions contain a powerful hallucinogenic of DMT yeah. yeah so of course people are gonna fucking lick the toad's ass like shit can you, change you, your you, life <laughs> see in recent years it? smoking the and this is how Brian did it he had some on a little piece of glass and he smoked it <laughs> I'm Mushrooms just, come from cow shit. He'll right? tell I mean, you. It's got. A, it's got. A, it's a hard knock life, bro. <laughs> oh, you gotta milk a fucking toad to get high nowadays. Fucking hey. Comic says, "I don't know. I don't want to know." What, what, they do the what, what kind of chickens are they? Do they get too high? <laughs> so, just, just whatever flows PSA people's out there. Whatever but it's people's a, fucking a number of public figures have reported experimenting with the toads extracted toxins. Like, like Hartman said, Mike Tyson has spoke about it, and so is Hunter Biden. 
Yeah, Mike Tyson's never said some crazy shit or done some crazy shit in his life. You're right. That's a, that's a guy that I'm like, wow, fucking sane as his, the days his, long. Mike his Tyson. His cartoon is amazing. But they're going with part of the oh, thing is, is it, there's a new study coming out that says here's depression. If, uh, <laughs> Just the cream yes, and drop it on it. it. Tyson's trying to triple it up. Serotonin, and it will like it helps you like reset. They want to they want to do tests on it before they do anything about legal. <laughs> Holy shit! That's why he's got that frog thing in the background, motherfucker. He does. Doesn't he have the fucking frog or some shit in the background? Bog cast, yeah. right? The bog cast fucking logo is a frog, right? Yeah. This is because of this. Cause he milks frogs. It's not necessarily just from the frog, but the frog is one that secretes the chemical. People I'm make not asking like a question. This. Does or does he not have a frog draped behind him? Is the reason why the frog's right behind him is because he milks frogs? Is this Maybe all? Yes, he likes thing? frogs. I, I don't know. No, he's a frog I think guy. That's, that's no, I think it is because of that. That all leaks. That makes sense. I mean, if you're if you're like go, all in on if it, if you guys don't believe me, go over to MCM when you're done when we're done here and ask Brian. Don't do that because you guys are going to take what we said out of context. Don't do that. But that makes sense why he's got the frog thing up. That makes sense. Okay, I get it. It's probably already taken out of context. Oh, yeah, it's the internet. The internet, <laughs> Brian, the internet loves that shit. It, everybody here knows Brian has talked about milking Sonoran toads for years. I he didn't know about this. It on, you never heard it? He talked about no, it on because flip it, side. He's talked about it on his channel. He talked about it many times on MCN. I He's didn't actually work it. with him a lot. of. I mean, we worked behind the scenes, but I wasn't on a lot of shows with him on flip side. Like, we mm. didn't really do shows together. So I've never heard, like... Well, yeah, it's yeah. turned into kind of like a tour. But that makes sense. What like you're going out at night and they're getting these frogs and they end up harming them too. They end up like, like well, you, so if, if you milk them completely, things as well. if if you milk them completely, they end up dying. So you've got to leave. Oh. You've got to leave some of their toxin in them so that they can regenerate Produce it. More. And living. Okay. And of course, a lot of people like, don't like and they milk them all the way. So, the things. so like what so, Brian does, he doesn't milk them all the way and he releases them back into the wild. So, so. And I'm well, not I mean, whatever, people, whatever floats people's fuck. goats, man. Okay. I don't give. I'm a shit. not saying anything that Brian has never has not said on YouTube many times. It, it a lot of shit makes more sense now. Like why he's got the why he's got the frog in the background and shit. I always wondered that. I, like, I would oh, probably frog lick the, the frog if you presented one to me. But well, that's just you, thank you, you for that input. It. But you, yeah, apparently you have to put on glass and smoke it. Yeah. So I don't even know why licking frogs is a thing. That I mean, that's not even supposed because to be. Well, somebody had to be the first. People, yeah, people misconstrued what they have to do and they end up licking them. Oh, okay. That makes sense. <laughs> whatever floats your toads, I mean boats. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, whatever. <laughs> Fuck, you want to milk? You want to fucking milk to... Like people do weird shit, bro. I do weird shit, man. I mean, fuck, I spear fish with like a, a homemade trident spear. So I get. Does that get you high? Because that's not yeah, yeah, that's that's a level does. of weird. It, it, you know what it does? It relaxes. It it really it's very relaxing. Releases serotonin. It's very zen. Yeah, it does. It does. It's like if I go out and do that, well, everything's that's what okay. Mushrooms and all that stuff does it. It releases a lot of serotonin. Yeah, it just makes. That's why it's a good reset if you have depression and stuff and you microdose. Yeah. Blah blah blah. So yeah, when I want to go kill somebody instead of doing that, I go out and stab fish in the lake. That's why. <laughs> no, I'm good. Just think good of those fish can weeks. scream and what? yell. Would huh? you fish as much? I'm sorry, what? Somebody said that joke. If fish could scream, like when you took them out of the water with the hook in their mouth, they're just screaming bloody murder. Like, would you keep fishing? But I can't remember who did that joke. So if anybody knows. No, it would suck me. if you reel in a trout. Like, you just, ah! 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 Like, <laughs> shut up, fish. Why do you think? Why? Yeah, no, yeah. It hurts. But that's it. That's the show. <laughs> We're concluding. Thank God. Bro. Ask Brian. Nothing I said is. The hooks in my eyes. I we've gone from like licking toads' asses to fish screaming out of water, like the fucking the old uh, Quizno pizza screaming rat mice things that they had in their commercials. <laughs> what are we doing? Quizno but thank pizza? you everybody for hanging out no. with yeah, us thank for you. over good. three and a half hours for our normal two hour show. <laughs> Scott was so awesome. Scott I was amazing. Thought, I thought he was only coming for like 20 minutes, 30 minutes. 
He really didn't even have anything to promote. We actually had to pry something out for him to promote, and he actually couldn't even promote it because he hasn't pitched it yet. Hey, everybody, shh, nobody tell. It's a big secret. Care Bears movie. And so then <laughs> Pete just has to go and edit that one part out. Yeah, I think he's sleeping, so we're, we're going to have to edit it out. Oh, more. man, you just told him you would. I did, t- I did tell him we would, and we will. Well, the show's not done. He can't edit it out yet. Until the yeah, we have to, well, we have, we, yeah, yeah, you can't edit it out you, after you render it anyways. It doesn't. It takes 12 hours to render. So. And then when he edits it, it's the whole show's got to re-render. Yeah. So. yeah. But thank you guys all for hanging out. We appreciate yeah, thanks, it. We love you, guys. you guys are great. Check out Marco tomorrow. Are you going to be on there, Sticks? Or are you just going to be in the chat? I'll be in the chat. So you'll see Sticks in the chat. You'll see Marco on Sunday. You might not see me on Sunday. I have got nothing done for Sunday yet. So I've got to <laughs> go in my on Monday. Because Maybe. just remember, though, I'm going to leave everybody with this as I end the broadcast. Please don't Marco talk about thinks he's cool, <laughs> but he's never going to be Scott Lobo cool seeing yeah. Blink and Happy Death Day at the same time. My coolest moment's better than that moment. Just say. Don't lick toes. I don't know. He probably made Here more is. money. And don't look to well, don't yeah, he probably toes. did. No, he probably He'll did, but smoke it. He smoked it. My money, my coolest moment doesn't have to do around money. My coolest moment's way better than that. Is that Neil Adams not washing his hands cool? That is not. Hey, you know what? We were talking about that. We were talking about that today with a couple of artists. We we're like, I don't know why everybody gets mad about shit. Like, Neil Adams never washing his hands. Everybody's like, yeah, people didn't know that. I was like, no, people fucking get because we were talking about how, like, when you tell people stuff, they just don't understand. Like, it's not that big of a deal. And, like, like the Neil. Kyle can attest this because we back yeah. when we did MCM we'll show, that, that's we'll show you preparation is not needed. <laughs> yeah, absolutely, absolutely zero prep. We actually prep though. <laughs> hey, uh, but when me and Kyle used to do it, that story, the Neil Adams hand story, came out on when me and Kyle were doing MCM. We used to do MCM for a long time, yep. almost a year, and uh, they ask you can ask Kyle. We got a lot of there's a lot of people who. Send us messages. Send Kyle messages telling about what should be done to me. Send me messages. And they were not fucking happy with that story. And all I was was like, the guy was kind of a jerk and he doesn't wash his hands. And one guy went off. Who was it? Some guy sent you a message. It was like two paragraphs of butt. What if you don't have hands? Was he just following him around? I How does he know for sure? Was he like walking every single time he went to the bathroom and checking him? Then did he actually like check his hands every single what, what else was he saying? He's saying some crazy shit. And I was, was like, all kinds of shit. Oh, I was like, dude, we got to put this guy in a restraining order. That guy probably didn't lost have hands. his fucking shit, dude. The dude doesn't wash his fucking hands. What do you want me to tell you, man? So, I don't he know. went to the bathroom. We didn't wash it. He I mean, the air dries. But thank there you. There was guys. some real, back then, there were some real great MCM shows, man. There was some real, we had, <laughs> yes, there was. We had some real fun MCM shows. Ah, one well, of the thank coolest you all moments you guys ever. For hanging out. Hey, you yes. see what I'm saying there? That's a peak. You see, that was a peak. Cool. Th- that that stuff will never come back again. MCM had its peak. That's all I'm saying. You know, coolest shit ever. You're never gonna get taxes and fuck. How's your? How, by the way, Kyle, I think you need to go ask somebody how his crypto is doing in his MTL. S- N- he made this big long post that somebody stole all his books and stuff, and and he disappeared from what? social media. Yep. Did he blame you? He probably so he still blaming me. Yeah, he blames me for everything. <laughs> sure. I'm stealing some fucking two dollar book. <laughs> Get the fuck out of here. <laughs> oh. Yeah, BK, this that's good, man. Me, you don't have to press. BK, we all hey BK, when we always got a I got an extra camera over there. We always got more room for people. So feel free. Join <laughs> Renovision. We'll put you in uh We'll put you and Scott on, and you guys can have a great chat about the coolest moments that you're still waiting to have happen. So, she come on next time we comes on. Yeah, BK. Yeah, BK. Come on, chat. Come on the other side of that thing. I love the back wall, by the way. I love the ambiance, Kyle. Great ambiance here at SMS. <laughs> no, in the the fucking ba- the the background brick of the brick, wall. brick wall. Oh, I I love it too. It's the best. Yeah, I love the brick wall. Hey, you're green. I love the Rick Wall. Wait, what do you think of my superhero pug man? Uh, okay. I like the I like the skull nose. That's that's AI generated. <laughs> Rick Wall's an inside joke that we were telling. Sorry. We'll tell it some other time when we're off there. All right. Just, uh, let's, Kyle, it's good to be with you.